today we're gonna start a fresh start physical water right it's gonna be like a basically like pre-avenger water pre-avenger war there uh I mean, it's obviously a water red. Um, yeah. Let's go with female. I haven't done a female character in a while. Now, there is veteran in this game. Obviously, right, you can play veteran. However, veteran only gives you like 10% more XP. And honestly, it's kind of okay to play veteran, like, like worth in quotation marks, like later on and later acts. But like in early acts, it's. Not worth it. Unless you, like, you know, when I have, like, an extra challenge, then it's fine. But. You don't need to play veteran, like, it's. Doesn't really do anything. To be honest. Anyway, we're gonna start out, obviously, by, like, killing the mobs here, getting the lore note on the side, and, like, we are level 2 now. Um. If you want to like play a physical character, then pretty much force wave is the best thing to do. Um, let's put it here for now. You can use force wave with a shield or with a two ender, but only if you have a two ender, then you can spam it, right? Only then you can spam it. So we're gonna get a two ender over here called the Herald's Great Sword and use that one. You can instantly remove common items, they're all garbage in this game. And always tick, um, always show double unique, uh, double rare rather. The rest of the loot filter is, in my opinion, not good. It needs like a proper rework, I would dare to say. But. It is still like useful to like just untick common and like to tick this and like to soon untick this and then like eventually untick that as well. Uh, the right side of this is kinda debatable. And what you could do is like you could remove like range weapons. You could like remove everything but like 200 melee to be honest. Because as long as you like show, like always show all uniques and like always show all double rares, you're not gonna like really miss out on like bad stuff to be honest. Ah, like on, on good stuff. <laughs> you're only gonna like filter out the stuff that you don't really need anyway, so. You can do it like that, sure. Uh, now at level 3 we're gonna like put two more points down here and one point here. And then at level 4 we're gonna put like two down here and like one on the tremor transmitter. And then we can spam the boss wave. Welcome on Old, welcome on Frosty Rix, welcome on Amun Kaidon, welcome on Brustprit, welcome on Dark Inoa, welcome on Chris Jill, Memphistar, Cyberon. Welcome on guys. Red Zix. Red Zik. B Boomer, B Boomer music. Yeah, this is kind of B Boomer music indeed. Starcraft Brood War music. Uh, Truth Seeker, how you man? Hymn of Gaming, welcome, welcome. On. How are you guys doing on this lovely, lovely Friday night? Alright, so we're all over four red. Right? Um, two here and one down here. And now we can basically like put Force Wave on our red mouse button and just spam it like this, right? Remove it here if you want. And if you're struggling with energy, um, try to like look out for gear that has energy regeneration. <clears throat> you can get like tunics that have energy regeneration and helmets that have energy regeneration. Usually it's like lighter, like cast or armor gear. Because we don't really want to like put that many points on spirit on this build, which would also give you energy regeneration. But I mean, you want to like put points in cunning to like scale your physical damage. Ideally, you will need like some points maybe in physique to like wear two enders, and you will need to put some points in spirit to like wear rings and so on in the minutes. However, the, the 
like most of your opponents you want to put into uh, cunning, right, pretty much. Did I figure out how my elementals died yesterday? The people on like on like on a on a Discord, let's say like that. Good, you're back. They thought it's a bug. Zentai said like maybe it's like um like the, the mob that like died like applying physical resistance reduction and then like I got hit at something else at the same time. But I kinda still heavily doubt that to be honest. Yo Magfer, welcome on, welcome on, thanks for the raid. Welcome guys, how are you doing? How's your uh, first start witch humper doing? Welcome, welcome. And uh, thanks for the resub, Tex Max Tex. Welcome back to the Bloomers, much appreciated. Appreciate the support, welcome back, welcome back. 35 billion months already, holy fuck. That is crazy. Match club cute. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome to Kernel. Hello, hello. Yo, Zekron, Wokman. Uh, what happened to yesterday's soldier? Uh, it also died. <laughs> yesterday I was like so tilted because of like the video like not working properly and like having like rendering issues and so on. Today I'm like chill again. Not gonna die today. But yesterday, holy fuck dude, I was so tilted. <clears throat> Reeked by Protoss, yeah. Yesterday I was like really reeing a bit, honestly. I didn't have time to watch the whole video you put out for top 10 broken builds, which built your command for metaplay. <clears throat> it's not even long, the video, come on. What do I mean? Like, my videos are usually like 5 hours long. And you're telling me like a 20 minute video is not long enough? Uh, it's like too long already? What do you usually watch, like shorts or what? <laughs> okay, uh, <clears throat> but like seriously, what kind of. <clears throat> what kind of build do you want to play? Like, do you want to play, like, I don't know, like, give me a damage type you want to play, or like, give me a playstyle, do you want to, like, play a duo wheel, do you want to play, like, two-handed, do you want to play, play, like, sword and board? Are you playing hardcore, are you playing softcore? You can play what I'm playing right now, you can just play force wave. I mean, that always works. But, I mean, force wave is more, like, mid-range, it's not, like, true melee, to be honest. <clears throat> and prime strike shaman is, like, a bit more, like, true melee, with, like, giga AoE for, like, well, if you want to, like, play a two-hander, right? You can always play like Force Wave or Promise Strike, pretty much. Force Wave, uh, like, prom uh, Force Wave Soldier or Promise Strike Shaman. Um, if you want to go for like a secondary for Soldier, <coughs> for Force Wave, uh, you can play Oath Keeper secondary, it's really good. You can also play like Sword and Board, Warlord, instead like focusing on mostly Blitz with like Weapon Pool skills and Cadence or Rare Just Filler as a filler. Probably Righteous Filler is better nowadays. Um, you could also play... Uh, Duo with Melee Softcore. Okay, Duo with Melee Softcore. I mean, I have a... Like, in the video, there's like a Reaper slash Spellbreaker. Put out like proper guide videos for like Reaper and Spellbreaker. But I mean, you can also play Saboteur or Blademaster. Or... Uh, like... Witch Hunter or Dervish, honestly. Just make sure to like play the right damage type, right? If you're playing Acid, like if you want to play Acid, you should play Witch Hunter. Or um Dervish, right? Dervish and Witch Hunter are like smoothest for acid damage. Uh Blade Master dual wield is like great for pierce damage. And you can also play it physical, but it's mostly like pierce, and you can also play it cold, but mostly it's good for pierce. Um, Spellbreaker, Reaper, and Infiltrator are amazing for cold. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of like it. Like usually you play like Pierce, Acid, or Cold as a Nightblade, right? Our Reckoning Water is fun too. I really like Our Reckoning Sentinel actually. I like that more than Warlord. I mean, Warlord is like. It's not bad, obviously. I mean, many things work in this game, and many things are good. As long as, like, know how to build them. Our Reckoning is, um... Uh, it's good on Warlord for physical. 
But honestly, I always feel like fire is way more like way better for leveling than physical, like gear wise. It's way easier and smoother to play. And for fire, well you could play Shield Breaker, right? Like demolition is secondary, or you could play Actually Occultist secondary, because like Occultists while it's not like let's say the best fire class, you get like resistance reduction for fire from vulnerability, and you can like transition into like zone damage traps later on. Like you can play acid, you can play fire, you can play uh, even physical technically, vitality, chaos. Like Sentinel is very, very flexible. That's why I personally like it more than Warlord actually for Arachnid, because like Warlord is very like physical only. And honestly, the itemization for physical is good for endgame, but you need to like get those random drops first and before that it's a little... It's not bad, just like, in my opinion, worse than other options. Anyway, at level 9 we're gonna like put a point in Blitz here, so like we have more movement, right? We can like Blitz like this, charge at an enemy, and we're gonna like put one point here as like a circuit breaker, in case we like drop low we get like some healing. And also gonna like, put one point in fighting spirit, I guess. Which doesn't really honestly do that much at this point. It activates when you attack, right? No, when taking damage, actually. And it's only like a 5% chance to activate. Honestly, fighting spirit is kind of garbage in low levels. I should have maybe like saved the point and like put it somewhere else, but I will. Eventually, you're gonna need the point anyway. Just right now, it's kind of bad, actually. <clears throat> Isn't fire much easier to play? For our reckoning? Yeah, for Fire Reckoning, I think Fire is just like way easier to play than Physical. I think way easier like progression-wise, for sure. You can also play Paladin for Fire, like Inquisitor Secondary or... Uh, Superior is good, that's Physical Damage, let's go. We want to go to this cave here in... Wherever this is. Foggy Bank. Like shortly before Foggy Bank. Because this one has a shrine. <clears throat> you don't necessarily need to like go into every single cave in this game. I mean, if you don't know what's inside a cave, it's better to go inside a cave than to skip the cave, but... Not every cave... I mean, every cave is gonna have something in it, but... Not every cave is gonna have something that's like really worth going into. This one is very much worth though, because of the shrine. Because you want devotion points, right? This thing over here. Don't get intimidated. Uh, it's basically like your third mastery, right? It's uh, pretty nice. Aether Templar are Reckoning Boy. Oh boy. Aether are Reckoning is really like... Underwhelming, to be honest. And it's really underwhelming. Started playing with default camera zoom. Are you a noob again? Is it the nostalgia kicking in for you? Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, you rituals, do you want to do pets with you casting dots? You can cast debuffs, but you casting dots, it's not gonna work out for endgame. Like, it's not gonna... Like, it's fine, like, in the early, like... On normal difficulty, it's gonna be fine. If you wanna go higher than normal, like, I don't know, like, level 60 and higher, basically, it's gonna be pretty bad. You will eventually... Like, pets in this game, at least, like, true pets, that, like, scale with pet bonuses, they don't really allow... For like dual like hybrid scaling um you want to either like focus on your own damage or on the pet damage like f trying to scale both is not gonna work for end game at least <clears throat> i showed you my cave please respond why did i read that A bit late and I managed to get one bopped. Thought I was a pro. Dude, that elemental stuff was bullshit. Like, it feels like a bug. Like, even I even, like, posted on the forum and, like, bug reporting and Zentai can't really explain it so far. <clears throat> like, he's, uh... He's also, like, only, like, putting out speculations, honestly. Anyway, level 10, you can choose your second mastery, but in... 9 out of 10 to like cases, I would advise you to postpone that until like around about 30 or maybe, maybe even 40. <clears throat> Instead, like keep pushing like 2 points at force wave and like 1 point in the bar and uh, get more cunning, right? 
You wanna maybe like save some points though, because you might get like a two-hander that requires like a shit ton of physique to wear, and then you wanna wear like put points of physique to get the two-hander. <clears throat> I mean, if you, for example, you can like play Vitality Pets, and then you always are gonna need, for example, Devouring Swarm from Shaman Tree anyway, for resistance reduction. So, passing something like Devouring Swarm is always gonna be good, as long as your pets also deal Vitality damage. Any fun castle build? There is like 5 billion fun castle builds in this game also. Like, castle is like arguably the best archetype, I would say. <clears throat> Depends what you want to do. Like, do you want to like throw like fire cocktails and bombs? Do you want to like have lightning storms and totems? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> do you want to like cold, like drop down like cold meteors? Like ice meteors? Uh, or do you want to like be like a vitality caster with like leech sigils on the ground and stuff like that? There's tons of good builds. Incorruptible of Alacrity, holy fuck. Okay, this one is obviously a force wave item. <clears throat> of Alacrity is, well, bad because force wave scales with casting speed and not attack speed. However, incorruptible prefix is a shit ton of resistances. It is one of the best prefixes for. Like amulets and rings to be honest, so this is kind of uh, interesting. Also we got a Thunderstruck of Haste. I mean, of Haste is always login because of Haste is movement speed. And also at three points we have the Jackal here, which also gives us total speed, so like movement attack and casting speed. And you can really like feel that the character is moving around way quicker now. Feels good. Can you play a tanky Bomberman Stork? <clears throat> or is it always a blast cannon? I mean... You can tank, like, for three seconds when you press the mirror, right? And you have Blast Shield Good, and you have Maiden Seal Protection. So it's not that bad a roll. Looking forward to playing the 1.2 and of course waiting for the new expansion. Thank you for all the content. Yo, Archon T, thanks for the resub. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to the Bloomers, much appreciate the support. Move along. <laughs> but I mean, ultimately... Fuck, sorry about Duncan. I mean, honestly, okay, normal like, it doesn't matter too much. Generally, though, at least in Ultimate, you want to side with Angrim because he just has, like, the better the better crafting bonuses. Anyway, no. Time for Duncan Donuts, then, I guess. Sure. Um, I mean, ultimately... <clears throat> what did I say? Ultimately, a uh, Sorcerer is a caster, right? So obviously it's never gonna be like as tanky as like a dual like or like a like a sword and board warlord for example, that just wouldn't be balanced. Uh, but I I do have like a like a sorcerer that killed literally like that defeated literally all content in the game like all celestial bosses including like the the secret bosses and so on. Um, so yeah like canister bomb sorcerer or iron like Uzu and canister bomb sorcerer or iron sorcerer are like really really good on this patch. Um, there's also some other sorcerers that are really good as well. I haven't I haven't played them all, but I, I can guarantee you that like Pyron, Sork, and Uzu and Sork are really really good this patch. A retail build still a thing? Yes. Yes, yes. Now look at this, we have a off celerity suffix. I'm kinda tempted, honestly. To equip this, even though it might be yellow, right? But like casting speed is that's damage. Because you need casting speed to attack faster with boss wave. Like make it feel smoother, you want some more casting speed. Streamer RNG. It could have been like a rare prefix that would have been e would have been like even better. <clears throat> The the most like straightforward and like beginner friendly retaliation build that I can recommend for like a starter, like if you're starting fresh or like if you're a returning player and you have like no gear, um, would be a acid retaliation sentinel, so occultist and oathkeeper. That is, I would think, like in my opinion, like the best. I have like a budget perdition sentinel that you can look out uh, for on my YouTube. That one's pretty good. 
Also we have a superior ruin now. This is another upgrade. Very nice. Uh, you don't need to like save yellows, just throw them away. They don't sell for anything really. You can't sell greens though, like greens are good to sell. Okay, let's see here, what do we have? No movement speed, so garbage. And some green belt. I mean, this seems fine, sure. And this is not good enough, okay. I also have a blue belt and a green helmet now from Milton. Acolytes cord. I mean... Some disgusting pet item, right? Imagine playing pets. Okay, let's put down a first link here for this build. Let us... <clears throat> create a link here so you know what I'm playing. I'm playing what I'm playing. I die at the same time of killing the skeleton dungeon boss. Do I lose the loot? Yes. If you die in a skeleton key dungeon, there is no going back. You have to reset your game by going back to the main menu to re-enter the place. They're called like roguelike dungeons after all. Like even in softcore, if you die, you lose all the loot that you haven't picked up. And you can't re-enter until you reset the session. So there's like some minor risk in softcore as well. For Bomber Street Breaker, should I aim for Ulzin set? Like for a Sorok Ram game? Uh, yeah, you can also play around the adversary gun and then like play like only a couple of parts of the set. Or even like play a non set version. There's like a. There's some very interesting ways to play Shield Breaker, to be honest. It depends like if you wanna like rather play around Canister Bomb or you wanna rather like play around Grenado. It uh, depends. Uh, remember to rescue Algrom, the cook, over here. Well, yep, cook. Okay, cook you some good, good, good soup. <coughs> Yo, Dicky, welcome on. And Jackie Chan is here as well. Holy fuck. All the famous people. I'm gonna put more points in Rending Force, I think, right now. Then in the main skill, because the main skill needs more energy per point than the second skill here. So if you're like struggling with energy regeneration, you can like not put all the points on the main skill right away, but rather like just push the bar and then like once you get to rending force, put a couple more points on like rending force instead. Then you have like a better, like nicer balance between like damage and energy consumption. I should probably go back to, to Devil's Crossing now. We've been zooming around through all of Act 1 already almost. So let's go back and then like a couple of quests and then I go to the setter because going to the setter I need some time. is gonna give me Welcome to my brief. You don't remember. Uh, another bag. And you do want bag space, right? Bag space is what everybody wants. <clears throat> what do you want? Might as well kill this guy. Out. Okay, talk to all the people, get all the XP. Algrim soup is not as good as bear home soup though. That is very true, that is very true. That is very true. Uh, any hints on season 6 date? <clears throat> Currently we have no hints, no. I am sorry, no hints. What's with Friendly with Devil's Crossing, hog you. Okay, let's go down here. And we got another level, right? Yet again, another level. <coughs> How do you farm Wenigo eyes if you went friendly with Barrowholm? Just killing random Wenigos. Um, there is like a quest, like like in the 
I think once you're honored, at least, or I think it's honored. You have like this quest to like defeat three when you go bosses that like drop their hearts for you. And you can farm those three. They like have a very high chance to drop the like the when you go eye. Or like any of the when you go medals really. This is Tarnished Axe. Oh, no, it's bad. Unlucky affixes. And don't you think Force of is the most powerful skill in the game? No. I mean, it's strong for leveling, definitely. Is it the most powerful? No. It's good, though. It's a good skill. If you don't turn in the quest, you also still have the quest marker every time they spawn. Yeah, that's actually a decent tip, you know, like if you would like an um, easier time refarming them and you don't know like their spawn locations that well, then you can like just not hand in the quest. True, true. What is your all time and perhaps the viable build you ever played in Grindon? My all time build. Build of all times. Wait, you mean like the best of all times? Like my oldest of all times? Top six pins. <laughs> my all time favorite. One of my all-time favorites is a Soul Rend Reaper, even though Soul Rend Reaper... I mean, it's a good build, but it's not like a top 6 build, right? Definitely not. Um, What else? I mean, Bomberman Sork. I played it one, I think, like... I mean, three times already. Like, once as a beginner starter, once in a league, and then like once more before a league, and then also like once as a Shipbreaker. So I played it like four times in total, basically, that archetype. Uh, that's pretty fun. What's the top six jazz? Uh, it's just like some Senator G memes. Alright, next up you wanna get, uh, let's get like the cast and speed and spider. Then after that you don't wanna finish the spider, you don't wanna finish the jackal, you just wanna like go for like Sator's Gyna or Eel. And then you can get to the Kraken. The Kraken. Uh, okay, now if you hand in this quest here, you're gonna get a bag. Right. A bag, a bag, a bag. Some more space. Stylish and strong. Very stylish and strong, yeah. Okay. Upgrade shoulders. Uh, we can't wear these because we don't have the spirit. We're too, too spiritless. Oh yeah, one thing, guys. Um, keep the salt bag. See you around. It's like a good luck charm. Always keep the salt ba salt bag in case you need some salt for your soup. Good, you're one of you. That's good. There have been count warden. All right, we have bag, we have solar items. I mean, I could have like checked the vendor honestly for like maybe some better weapon. Bleed water, bleed trickster, cold reaper, command of fire are yours, like your all-time favorite builds. Like like force wave, word eater, commando. That's pretty fun now. Yeah. That's a pretty nice one. You feel like you no longer pammers to see the SR? I played some SR uh, today, off stream, and yeah, it feels good. 
Like I actually play some SR80, and Good even SR80 like feels reasonable. I mean, sure it's hard, but like it's it's not like annoyingly hard. It's pretty nice. Yo, copy Lee. Welcome and welcome. On. Eleven billion months already. Thank you so much for the support. Welcome back to the bloomers. Appreciate it. I would, like, uh, I would really like to start with a Bomberman, looks really fun, but I'm a complete beginner and will get the game on the next sale. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a great starter build, I mean, it's in my top 10 like starter builds for beginners after all. Like, it's in there for a reason. Uh, right, if you check out the video. Um, and then also I have a like separate, more in-depth guide for for that archetype as well. Like, if, you're, if you like it, if you like what you see, then Check out the like other like 20 minute video where I like talk about that build in specific and like how you should progress it and like where you should farm for items and so on and so on. That's uh, that should be helpful. And honestly, like it even got buffed on this patch. Like they actually buffed cocktail. I don't know why, but they buffed cocktail. So. It's even better now. I mean, I know why, but... Because there were like some, especially like spam cocktail balls that weren't performing that great for endgame. But like for leveling, cocktail was always great. And uh, the patch really didn't change it at all. It's arguably even better than before. I mean, they mostly buffed the... Um, the base duration, like removed some of the duration on the transmitter. Which means like you have either the same or like more duration with transmitter. And way more duration without transmitter. So it's like easier to like stack multiple cocktails on top of each other, which helps especially spam out a lot. Like you're like stacking the flat damage. Dual piss of purifier, very good. Uh, I honestly disagree. <laughs> uh, it, it is like easy to build technically, but there is like 200 better builds, I think. Like, not even kidding. Like, even, even Castle Purifiers, in my opinion, better than Dual with Pistols. It is. Like it's it's like it's like totally fine. You can play it, and also like I also played it right like for a beginner playthrough. It is definitely fine, but compared to like other builds, it's just it feels a little painful. However, it it, it did get a little bit better right this patch because of like the Hydra buff. Right, you have like more movement speed now if you're playing a gun. But if you want to like play a gun build, I feel like either dual wield sand spitter like Paladin or Warlord. Or like um, Rutnik, dual Rutnik, like Oppressor or Paladin is better as well. Um, or, I mean, two-handed is pretty good though. Like, two-handed purifier is fine. There's like a green crossbow for like elemental fire strike. And you can like play the Desolator gun later on, right? That's gonna be a skater. No. No skater. Yeah, like, I mean, okay, like, once you get, like, your endgame items on Pistol Purifier, then you have good damage. You're still paper squishy all the time, honestly. Um, but, like, for, for, like, a fresh start, if you don't have items, there's, like, a couple of items you can, like, craft. But compared to, like, other monster treatments that, like, other builds can use, it's, it's just mediocre, like... The archetype itself, like, if you look at the skills and so on, right? like, if you look at the skill trees, then there is, like, tons of, like, synergy there, right? Like, in the skill trees, there is very nice synergy for, like, dual with uh, pistol purifier. But the itemization is, like, horrible. Unfortunately. You watch the top 10 for Redditors? <laughs> Glad you enjoy it. I wanted to initially make like a top 20 because I mean you can like make a top 30 even if you like have like tons of playthroughs right and uh, you, you have like 
then you have like even better variety of builds. But I was like top 10 is what people search and not top 20 or like not top 30. Uh, that's number one and number two is like... Even top 10 were like took me long enough to be honest. Leander, Scan, and Marauder's Fury. I mean, both of those are like random drop too. And then there's like the old Breaker Pistol, I think it's called. And then there's like obviously Devil Tongue, but I mean that one is legendary and also random drops. Like, I mean it's it's a good gun, but you might play through the entire game and not even get it at all, right? And then what? I don't know. Is Scorpion a good devotion for Elsa build? Uh, I think Scorpion is kind of niche. It works well on some builds, but most Elsa builds I feel like actually skip it. Nowadays at least. But if you, if you like can't fit it, then sure, it's not bad. But I feel like most of the time there are better... Um, like better builds. Uh, yeah, I kind of agree, agree, maybe. The thing is, though, if if you get, like, certain items, like, when I, when I like, revisited my old, like, builds, like, for Lokar, it is actually surprisingly tanky. I mean, but, like, any Paladin is, really. I mean, ideally, right, I would have, like, put something in, maybe, like, Crab Turtles from the Store Paladin there. That's arguably, on this current patch, better than, I mean, yeah, it is better than, uh, Older than. But I mean, I have no guide and no nothing for that, so I can't really like put it there, right? I think Rune of Colossal Paladin is like the best one for loving. Like, objectively, the best one. But Older than is, uh, it's not that bad. And. I'm gonna like cater to all the. Diablo 2 boomers, right? And it's it's like really not bad. The problem is like you need to like farm stuff like Ekazul and so on. Which is a bit annoying. Like a bit harder to farm them than other stuff. And then like Tainted Ruby, Ruby of Gardal and the, the Ignafar chest. I mean those are random drops, right? It's a little shitty as well. I mean once you have that gear, it's like it's like good for low car. The problem is like for actual endgame after low car. You probably still have to like change your build because auras just don't scale into like end like actual endgame. You could play like Lightning Rune of Colossor as like Vindicator of Mage Hunter. Yeah. I think Paladin is like actually still also great for Lightning. Like, even for Lightning it's good actually. Honestly also like regen while leveling. It's like, I mean, once you have Giant's Blood, it's good, right? But before you have Giant's Blood, I feel like most of the time, like, investing points early into regen, it just means you're, like, ZDPS, right? Because early on, you have no skill points. So if you put points at, like, regen skills, you have no damage. Like, zero damage. Later on, though, it can be pretty good. But I feel like Vindicator isn't even, like, that great of a, like, regen class, at least compared to something like, for example, um, Elementalist, right? Yeah, Scorpion is a tier 1 devotion that Crate could consider buffing, to be honest. You will still have like 3.5 regen. If you go like what, like double God's Ring, Scythe, and... The thing is like the Mogodogon packed points you get from God's Rings. I mean, they are definitely worse than... Addictive Flame points, or like Minyar's Bulwark points, right? I feel like Shaman is almost like the worst part of Colossus. On the other hand... I mean, you have like insane regen when you also like attack with Savagery, but are you gonna do that? I don't think you're gonna do that. The map for Lightning regen. Like Scythe, Giant, 
ultos and so on. Scorpion has like the worst nose of all tier 1 devotions. Yeah, it's really not that great. Like com compare like any point in Scorpion to like the feet of turtle, right? The foot of turtle. The fucking 4% physical on turtle. <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, I mean, Manticore, if you need like flat resistance reduction, it's like way better anyway. I mean, it's a tier 2 versus a tier 1. Like, Manticore is way better, you know. Uh, how come Z had a change of heart and unbanned madly? I mean, he mostly needed people to give feedback. Like, he needed testers for this patch. <laughs> it's, I think, like, if he didn't, if they didn't do this patch, Xanta would have not unbanned Madly and would have also not unbanned Maya. But he needed feedback from those two, so he unbanned them. And to be honest, like, they they are they have like some hot takes sometimes and like sometimes like very strong opinions which is fine but like generally they are like reasonable i mean not always but most of the time i mean i feel like they're more like still like way better like feedback than some other players not my friends in devil's crossing no Okay, stage 2, you want to ideally face tank the storm and then dodge the wave, like face tank this and then dodge this one because the wave has a slow that also like slows your attack and casting speed and that's pretty fucking annoying. I mean, another way to play it would also be to like move out when he stomps and then move in again because you want to stay close, right? Because if you don't stay close, then he's gonna do the crossbow, and the crossbow is like arguably his deadliest attack. Um, also, one thing that I actually fucked up, I only have two fabric for some reason. So we need to go back to the docks real quick. Just take feedback from the Biffster. <laughs> Dude, Biff like posted one thing in the forum and he like instantly got almost banned. I don't know if he actually got banned or not, I don't know, but like, it's kind of full of shit. Not all of it was full of shit, to be honest, but it's just like the way he words stuff, as always, it's just, you can't take him seriously. It's, it's just unreasonable. Okay, this chest over here is gonna have the fabric, there we go. Wait, Krieg didn't drop his amount, did he not? Am I too low level for that? Interesting. I don't know, yeah, that's weird. You're actually right. I, mean, I don't need it, so I'll ignore it for now, but... That does look a little weird. Alright, seeing a little weird. Okay, more casting speed, and now we go for blues and go for Sato's Guide. That's a short right there. Which one? Biff, Biff's hot takes. Is it the warden's defeat? Is it so the people on YouTube are gonna be like, Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> One million years minimum. That's some copium right there. But, uh... I mean, if you feel like something is like oh, short worthy, I would always like, go through my Twitch clips and check them if like something is like short worthy so you all right after go. killing warden tree you want to go to conclave of the three right you want to do and obviously survive the average trials because why the fuck would you not survive this the emissary uh and then you want to choose a faction which has the movement skill that you want to play and I think this time actually around I want to play the Wires Might like Charge like ability. Not Vanish, not Leap. Not this charge that like requires, sorry, that it requires a meta weapon and not Rift here either, so we're gonna side with Solar actually. 
How does guaranteed MI work? I can't get MI from Scrab boss on the plateau. From the Scarab boss. Mm. Yeah, since like any Scarab can drop that, maybe those Scarabs don't have like 100% drop rate. I'm not sure to be honest. Oh, I shouldn't like equip all these, like accept all these quests. We're not gonna do them anyway. We're gonna postpone all this act until later. We wanna go into Act 2, which is like on the left side, like to the west across the bridge. But we wanna like choose a faction here. Um, so that we can use like the rush here, right? You can like buy a couple of these because I mean, you're gonna like switch out your metal every now and then. And you can put this rune augment on your metal now, and this is gonna give you a additional movement ability. So you have like rush, the await, and blitz now. Now we can zoom, zoom around. Uh, which one do you have to side with to be able to farm Sister Bravna? Uh, Sister Bravna is part of Kaiman's Chosen, right? So you want to side with Death's Vigil. If you're playing like a Virus Might Skater, right? You want to side with Death's Vigil. Dirk has 100% drop, but you didn't get a drop. Wait, is there some bugs on this punch? That didn't exist here in the playtest? That would be kind of weird. D3 class? I mean, you can go ask... Wait, no. You can go ask uh, Grimer. Maybe Grimer is even those. I mean, he's on my Discord, right? You can ask Grimer. He's the creator of the D3 mod. The Cormac Plateau Elite does not have a 100% drop, but the Derg in the docks has 100%. That's weird, yeah. Hmm. I feel like the Baggage should have like 100% drop too, in the Plateau, but... Maybe they didn't make it like 100% drop rate because it felt like it's like too early in the act? I don't know. That's yeah, kind of weird though. Alright, you want to go to the Spined Cove, obviously. This is one of the caves that you want to go into because it has a shrine. Hit again. And I should craft some opponents, right? After Act 1, you want to go to the Smith and craft components. Or at least, like, when you're around level 20. Also, feel free to always, like, use components, right? Like, if you put, like, I don't know, Polish Emerald here. Polish emerald there. You you don't need to save them. You are gonna get enough of them. You got these double rare legs today. What is that? Glacial of the winter storm. Holy, that's sick. That's actually insane. Congrats, congrats. Okay, don't kill this guy. He can sell you pots later. Subjugator of Supremacy. I mean, Subjugator is a pet prefix, however, Supremacy is plus to the Force Wave, so log in. Log in. That's a good one. Yo, Mergus, welcome, welcome. Yeah, maybe it has to be like specific Bell Heal. I'm a little confused though, because Dirk doesn't really have like a specific one either. And apparently Durg does have a 100% drop rate, so it's a little weird. But oh well. Okay, what about this weapon here? 236 physique. It's just like a high level base, right? Way higher level base. 
So, uh, sure, let's put some physique with this one. There we go. The affixes are terrible, but I mean, it's it's still a good base. Uh, Wait can get you stuck in out of terrains, like like you're stuck now. Can't move. Margul the Rotten, more like Margul the Forgotten. Because Xanta forgot to update the drop race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lightning Guts are really good now, apparently. Which class would you play though? Conjurer still? Or maybe Lightning Skeletons even? Cabalist. That sounds cool. Lightning Pet Cabalist. Yeah, the Torchlight 2 soundtrack is insane. I'm not gonna pick any YouTube videos. <laughs> it's gonna kill my stream again. Oh, actually with Stormbringer of Mammoth. Didn't Crab Turtle want to play that at some point? And he said like it sucked, but I mean it was like obviously pre-punch. Alright, uh, this is a good ring as well. Needs level 20. Boss when he goes aren't guaranteed to drop when he go medals. Interesting. It's just like weird because like Berg is guaranteed and the other one is not. It seems weirdly inconsistent to be honest. I mean that's why I said like sucked, right? Like three pa like three patches ago. Not on this patch, obviously. Like, he didn't play 1.2 until, like, yesterday. Or, like, I think the only thing he played, like, in 1.2 was, like, the Paradon. Alright, let's go in here, kill some wasps. Wasps are always nice for experience. Because of the high density. And they're, like, so squished, like, just, like, one-shot all of them. Yo, Kerplunk, thanks for the raid. Welcome in, Grim Dawn 0.5 players. Welcome into Grim Dawn 1.2. Got the Tremor Blueprint. Wow, that's an amazing weapon for boss wave water, actually. Yes, we're gonna play that. Or like Craft Dunt. Once we can. If we can. I remember farming wasps when I was still newish to Grim Dawn for blues and purples. Mm -hmm. I don't, but I remember farming them for like jellies and stuff. I'd like for XP, yeah. A frozen heart? Wait, I didn't find a single frozen heart? What the fuck? How? Alright, we're gonna have to like come back for this one. Didn't get a single frozen heart. He's bad, man. Will I check out next PO League? Uh, probably not. It's gonna be an Avenger Savagery build? Probably, yes. How about company meant shards without auto pickup? What? Come see what's left of my wares. Alright, we're gonna lose some casting speed, but honestly, still want all the rest. Seems too good to pass on. Let's use the spell as well, and let's use like Mistwalker Legends. Sure, why not, right? Actually, my current ones are really good though. Maybe I shouldn't change them. 
But Miss Walker is like a really nice, like a generic pair of blue pants. If you find them, they're most of the time good to use. There are not many blue items in this game that are actually good, well, to be honest. You, dear, we have to hit but Miss Walker is a decent one, at least while leveling. Component shards without auto pickup. Wait, what about that? Stay How would you ever do that? Is this game any good? Uh, yeah, the expansions are worth it too, by the way. Which mastery will I choose? Uh, it says so in my title. That's gonna be a water. So, what you wanna do right after Act 1, around like level 20 ish, you wanna like go to the smith and like start crafting some materials. Like, uh, anti venom salve component, put it in your belt. Belt armor is six times as good as armor anywhere else. Right? Because if you have 24 armor on this component and you put it in your belt and belt is global armor, it's gonna apply to all six stats here. Whereas if you put it like somewhere else, it's only gonna like apply locally to like your chest or your feet and so on. So, uh, yeah, just keep in mind like if you have a component that has armor, always prioritize putting it into your belt or like anywhere like anywhere else. Also, you can always craft two wardstones, which are honestly ridiculously OP. Eighteen percent elemental and bleed dress on each, and you can like put one here and one here, and also. They have 6% uh, movement speed each. So with those, you are zooming, right? You are zooming. And then another thing that is uh, kind of overlooked, especially by newer players usually, is armor and armor rating and also armor absorption. So there is this like number here called armor absorption, right? It is by default only 70%. Um, what this means is that like all of your armor only has 70% effectiveness, meaning like 30% of the damage it's still just, just gonna like go through, right? Even though like your armor value might be like high enough to block it, it actually doesn't because it's not like effective. So what you can do to like fix that is you can craft two scaled hides, put one in your like pants, for example, like one in your shoulders, and you're gonna be at like 98%, which is not a hundred, but it's like way better already, right? Way, way better. Um, then we're gonna like check out the components that I have here. I can put like another ancient armor plating in my chest even. And then I would have, like, you know, 100% absorption. Let's put it in this chest, actually, that I got from the quest reward here. There we go. Now we have, like, way more armor and also 100% effectiveness. Um, then for vitality resistance, you want to use, for example, unholy inscription. And corpse dust and rings. And once you get it, uh, soul shards. Soul shards are really, really good as well. I don't have any yet though, so... Oh well. Let's put like a chipped claw in here. For, like some more physical damage. And once you get a Mark of the Traveler, you can put that on your boots as well. Which is also very nice. Okay, I don't have it though. You should always keep your dynamite with, like, with you. The other stuff you can put in here, to be honest. Um, maybe I put some more like corpse dust with us. Like, whatever I want to, like, use instantly, right? Uh, what you want to use instead of the chipped claw soon is you want to craft, like, a severed, severed claw, right? This one. It's level 24, though, so it's going to, like, wait a bit. Like, uh, I'm going to have to wait a bit for that. And then you pretty much always want to craft either Equilibrium or one of these relics. And usually it's always like Equilibrium. Because it gives you elemental rest, which we actually don't even need right now. But it also gives you more movement speed, right? Now we're zooming even more. Uh, would I aim for normal into ultimate? Yes, I will try to do that. Oh, also I got a ring here, right? From Steven Skinner, because I saved him. And if you save this guy, he's gonna give you like a ring. And this ring has physical damage. So that's good. And we can put this like here, for example. And we can put another like corpse dust here, and then we have even more vitality resistance and more damage. You just figured out the Tyra gives max movement speed. Is that new in 1.2? Yes, that is new in 1.2. Like finally now, range builds have something that makes them actually 
kite easier than before. Makes them feel more like actual ranged bolts. So I like the change a lot. Of course, it means that you can also like abuse it on like casters that are using guns. But Hydra is not like that great on casters usually, so you would have to go like a little bit out of your way at least to, you know, grab it. But it can of course like still be good. Depending on like which caster build you're playing exactly. Uh, what world am I playing? I am playing a Force Wave Soldier right now. I will be playing a Water later on. And I will probably be playing... This is a really good item, by the way. Holy shit. And I will be playing... Um, like some Savagery... Avenger Water later on. You need to get better at checking faction gear and components. Yeah, if you uh, like are struggling with like your armor rating, you can always check out like faction gear. They they have like some pretty good stuff, especially Black Legion, Homestead, and Rovers. I think have like really good stuff. Honestly, even Devil's Crossing has like decent stuff. And later on, also like the expansion factions have pretty good stuff too. Okay, um, Rolls Distinction. The medal that you get like guaranteed from these guys here in the pit. Always has like tons of CC resistances, like slow rest, petrifying rest, and so on and so on. That is a really, really good metal you can like pretty much use whenever you want, like whenever you get it. Um, however, in this case, I have like a off supremacy suffix on my current metal, so I will actually not use it here. Uh, also, at this point, we are almost like full yellow already anyway, like full green rather, with the gear. So we're gonna like remove yellows from the filter. You don't need yellows, like yellows are. Pretty trash in this game. However, on the other hand, like all others, like greens and blues and purples are always like all gonna be good and like relevant throughout all stages of the game. So from now on, you kinda don't need to touch the loot filter anymore until like way later. Okay, we're gonna play this one, right? Officers of Alacrity is really, really, really strong actually. One here, one here, and then like one here, sure, why not? And maybe some more cunning. Okay, uh, maybe like time for another build. Like another link rather to like show you what I'm playing right now. Level 21 is looking like this. Now that we have timers, do dots clip in this game? Like if you refresh a dot when there is one second left, are you losing DPS? No. You never lose DPS with dots when you refresh them. You can only gain DPS because um, it's basically like always gonna check if the new dot that you applied has a higher like roll than the other one, or like whether like it clips, uh, rather it crits or not, for example. And the highest one is always gonna stay, right? So if, say for example, application number one, you don't crit. Application number two, you crit. Dot number one is like still running though. You're gonna override dot number one with dot number two, like from the same skill, from the same source, of course. And then dot number three, right, like third application of the same skill, of the same dot, um, is not gonna crit. What's gonna happen then is you're gonna keep ticking with the critting one until the duration of that one fades, and then for the remaining duration, you're gonna have like your weaker non critting one. So you basically almost always wanna like reapply, like try to reapply, like to fish for crits. What's the best weapon for Force Wave? Physical? Mythical Stormfist Rebuke? Yeah... I mean, they... Uh, I mean, they nerfed the Cleaver, right? Like, War Cleaver used to be actually better than Rebuke, to be honest. But they nerfed the Cleaver. I still think, like, a perfect triple... Like, perfect prefix, perfect... Roll on the base, and, like, perfect suffix, War Cleaver... Is still gonna be more damage than a Stormfist Rebuke. But Stonefist Rebuke is comparatively way better on this patch than last patch compared to War Cleaver. Yeah. How accurate is the DPS indicator on this game? Um, it is very accurate for what it does, but it doesn't do much. Let's say it like that. Like if you are using Force Wave on your right mouse button, right now it's gonna show you the DPS of Force Wave. This takes into account the raw damage of Force Wave your percent damage multipliers, and it takes into account casting speed, right? It does not take into account crit, 
it does not take into account like a crit chance at all. So uh, the, it's gonna show so, like show the same number whether whether you even like hit at all or whether you have like I don't know thirty percent crit. Right, like, it will always like show the same number here. So keep in mind it only shows like raw DPS without crits. Uh, second of all, if you have like a build that like uses more than one ability, right? You would have to like put all the abilities like on your right mouse button or like left mouse button to like check the DPS because it's only gonna like show the DPS of that right if you like show if I put like blitz here it's gonna like show 488 right if I put double move 2 I'm literally a Z DPS player right I could like play the game like this and like if people ask me like what is my DPS like what's your paper DPS I would show them and they would be like what the fuck you have zero damage I just like you have to like know what it does and it doesn't like, the DPS number can't do much, right? It can't do much. It can only do one si one thing, and that's, like, calculating the damage for the one ability that's, like, on your left or right mouse button without taking into account any crits and stuff like that. Just use second page of tooltip. That is also a way to do it, but this only shows, like, the skills here. Um, it also doesn't show like all the skills over here. This will show like two. I mean, this also shows you like two. This is like well, per second. This is like per hit, right? This shows you the damage per hit. This shows you the damage per second. So, I mean, both have like a use, but the use of both is very, very limited. If you, if you know how it works though, and you know how to use it, that's honestly all you need. But most new players are gonna be like, what the fuck, the DPS counter is trash or like useless or something like that. Now, I mean, you just have to like know how to use it, right? And if I like only care, for example, about like my damage per second on Force Wave itself, and I'm playing like pretty much only Force Wave, then yes, I can like look at this weapon and compare it to this, and if I equip this, I'm gonna like lose a thousand damage on my Force Wave. I will lose less damage on my Blitz, of course. Um, but I'm mostly gonna care about false wave anyway here. But I mean, if you're like playing a caster and you have like another skill here, right? Like if I do it like this and all of a sudden like this is only like minus 300, not like minus 1000. Why is that? Because, well, if you have nothing here, it's gonna like compare the, the theoretical damage of your default attacks to each other. And that's like not helpful either, really. So... The DPS counter is accurate, and it works for what it does, but it doesn't... Like, the uses are very limited and can be confusing, especially for, like, new players. And you have to, like, know what it does. If you don't know what it actually does, then you're just gonna be confused. Like, castles in general should probably, like, rather just, like, check, like, their percent damage values compared to like like their, their casting speed and like their percent damage values rather than like looking at the DPS number for example. It doesn't show procs either? No, it does not. I mean it, if you have like a proc that like gives you like global damage like for example if I'm playing uh, Ulzat here right and I'm procking this one over here which gives me like percent physical damage and like flat physical damage if I proc that then like during its uptime it would show like increased damage Good, here. You're back. But if it's like down, it wouldn't. And also it doesn't show like proc on gear. Right? If you have like some stuff that has like chance on attack or like weapon pool skills and stuff like that, it's not gonna show any of that either. Yo, Virgolf. Welcome on, welcome on. Thank you so much for the resub. Welcome back. Five billion months. Much appreciated. Is 1.2 live now? It is, yes, it is. Live since yesterday night. Uh, why did they add the roll dodge? Seems very weird for an RPG to have such a mechanic. I mean, Diablo 3 and 4 have it too. Um, I mean, I didn't ask for it. I don't think, like, any Grindon player really asked for it. But it's there now, and honestly, I think it it feels good. I like it. Like, it, it, it helps with the overall, like, gameplay flow of Grindon. I, I like it a lot, personally, now. I mean, I also was very... What do you say that? Like, very skeptic of it at first. And uh, the, the like early iterations of it also didn't feel that great or like looked weird. Uh, I like the current one though. I think uh, works well, especially like in certain fights. In the main campaign, it sometimes feels a bit like 
you're like, why the fuck does it even exist, right? You're like, you question yourself, like, the fuck, like, this game was not designed around the skill in mind, right? And that's correct. Like, most of the content in the game right now was not designed around, like, this being a thing. Um, but, like, once you get to, like, endgame, like, you get to, like, Nemesis and, like, Celestias and so on, part of which have been, like, actually reworked for this patch, um, you will understand why it exists. And you will have to learn how to use it right. Or you just play, like, a pet, like, a, either, like, a pet build or, like, some other, like, Giga Tank build that can, like, still ignore it. Or just, like, a Kaiju that, like, never needs to, like, be in, in melee to, like, actually use it properly. But, yeah. How am I? I'm good. How are you? After you kill Cronley, right, you get to, like, this lab behind him, right, you have the camera rotation like this, usually. Then you have to, like, go through here. It's a bit, like, hidden. But there's, like, an Aether Crystal there. And you can keep, like, a crystal for yourself. And then you get an Aether Cluster, which, well, for obvious reasons, is amazing and hardcore. Did not play Veteran yesterday. I played some Veteran yesterday. But honestly, like, Veteran before, like, Act 3 or something like that is kind of, like, a waste of time, to be honest. I don't know. I need to be, like, more efficient with my time right now. Uh, could I please give a TLDR of Force Wave to Savage Transition? Can I use min here from the start? You mean this? Manure as well? I mean, yeah, it just requires a two-hander. You can like, use it, like, right away. Are you talking about Manure's Bulwark? Uh, you could also do Manure's Bulwark from the start. Um, however, honestly, like, for leveling, I mean, it depends, like, how you feel, right? If you feel, like, squishy, then sure, go for Manure's Bulwark right away. If you don't feel squishy, then what usually just go for all of the rage while leveling. It's just like more damage and like faster while leveling. You asked for a wait, you never thought it would actually happen. <laughs> like I, I don't think like a dodge or like an await skill is like that out of place in RPGs. I think it fits right in. I mean obviously Diablo 3 and 4 have it too. Now, whether or not you want to copy Diablo 3 and 4 is, like, another question, of course. But... I think it works. Kind of. Like, considering, like, how old this game this engine is. Like, if you take that into account, I think they've, like, done a... Like, a great job of, like, implementing it. But it... I can agree with you when you say, like, it maybe, like, feels a bit forced. Um... It doesn't feel, like, too natural for this game. It's not like a Hades game that was, like, designed around, like, dodging everything. Or, like, Dark Souls, after all. You're having a struggle as a new player. I picked Nightblade, but, like, accidentally. Soldier as well. Spent all my points in the Nightblade. Now I'm doing too much and no clue what to get from Soldier. Level 36 at Homestone, something like that. And I keep dying to level 5 above you. Uh, okay, so what you can do, right, is you can go to Grim Tools, to this website right here, grimtools.com slash calc, right. and then go on this button right here, import, and then you can, like, search for your file, like, this will tell you where it is, if you're using Steam Cloud Files, it's gonna be here, if not, it's gonna be here, then you click on this button here, and you load your player.gdc file in here, and then you're gonna have your character you can click the share button, it's gonna give you a link, and you can share this link in chat, and you can look at your build. And I can tell you why you're dying. Because there are many, many reasons why you could be dying. I don't know exactly why you're dying. Like, it could be you having, like, terrible skill allocation, it could be, like, you having terrible resistances, it could be you having terrible armor. It could be like you having terrible base HP. It's like tons of things that could be wrong. Yeet Sun, work one, work one. Uh, first of all, thanks for the builds. Now my question, do spells like the Warring Swarm stack on each other? So... The Warring Swarm is basically like a projectile that applies a curse. And curses stack with other curses, but not with themselves, right? So like spamming the Warring Swarm over and over is not gonna stack the skill. However, you can stack the Warring Swarm with like other curses like Pox and so on. Cam? Monka, Cam.
Okay, let's go back here. We have like too much, too much clutter. Can I rate your build? Five out of seven. I mean, dual wield Aether Oppressor seems good. That, that sounds like something I would play too. In before mixed, mixed build. <laughs> nah, it's a good build. Uh, I mean, the Gunslinger's chest is probably not needed. I mean, ideally, right on this build, you want to like farm the Bonemonger set. Obviously, that's like a random drop, and you probably don't have it yet. But yeah, that would be like a... the next thing. Chains of Anguish. I mean, I would never play this item in hardcore, but if you want it softcore, I mean, even in softcore, it's kind of. I just don't like the belt personally. Well, it, it can in certain situations like actually give you more damage, but most of the time it's gonna like scuff your build more so than not. It's kind of like a. It's most of the time like a noob trap item, but like sometimes it's actually not a noob trap item. It's kind of kind of in a weird spot. All right, we're just gonna push bar. We don't need to like max out this one. It's only dot damage after all. No need for that. I can put some more cunning. Um, yeah. I know Force Wave to 94, Devotion Rod. Should I use that and respec, or can I go the right Behemoth from the start and skip it as a Khan Uh, you mean for like the water? Come, friend, right to business. Nobody. I would just play like but Probably like a bit more aggressive devotions first. I also made like wait, let me find it. I, I made like a, a water theory craft at some point. That is more like an updated water. It has like a I mean the the build that I have on the forums, right? It obviously it works, but it's a bit I feel like it's a bit outdated. And I think I would now actually rather play Probably these devotions. Or like this overall. The the boots are obviously questionable though. And I think I only picked those because in my specific setup here, with like my affixes on my gear that I have in my stash. Um I otherwise have like terrible stun rests. But yeah, that's like what I would play right now at least. If I was to like make the build right now with the items that I have there, then I would make, like make it like that. And yeah, that that robot obviously has a fixed away, right? That one's way better away. All right, another ocean point. We now have another ten percent movement speed, which means we are maxed at movement speed. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's good. And it's 3.3k with Prox and like 3,000 without, but even like 3,000 without is like good enough. Remember you have like blindside, right, from Blitz to like reduce the A by like 150. And then like Prox on top, so like with everything up, it's like 3.5k OA. And permanent, permanent OA is like around 3,150, right, with blindside. No Wendigo Totem. Yeah, you want to like one point of Wendigo Totem. It was like a... Oh yeah, that's true, that's, that was like a lazy version i mean honestly you could like actually skip it i'm not i'm not even sure i feel like you could actually like skip it maybe but you can also like try to squeeze it in there you can like remove points from hmm. there's like several 
like skills from where you could remove points from. To get like the, the one pointer in Wendigo Totem and like the transmitter, like the, the leech part of the totem too. Cause, Cause leech is honestly like still really really good. Even though like regen got buffed. To be finally viable on many builds. Regen is still like nice, and even on Avenger Water, even though it's like a regen beast, for like instant leech, you still like sometimes want like a bit of leech at least. Ah, uh, Arsono classes, especially dangerous and hardcore. I would dare to say they are generally rather, especially safe and hardcore actually, not dangerous. Ohio, ayaya. Welcome and scrub. They're the safest in hardcore currently. I mean, they're probably the safest in hardcore since, like, the game came out, like, seven years ago. They always have been the safest in hardcore, to be honest. Always have been. Yo, Crab, Buhor, welcome guys. Alo, alo. Alo. Oh yeah, I need to remember that I have actually those skills as well. I'm like, I'm like never using it, what the fuck? What am I doing? You get here to the inner city, uh, drop a portal here, go outside first, get, grab the, the portal outside and then you can like port back to your personal portal. You can save like a little bit of time like that. Uh, yeah, you can, you can share a link here. Alright, let's take a quick look at your blade monster and like figure out why you're dying. Wait, how do you have like minus elemental res on normal? How did you, wait, how do you have minus seven fire res on normal? How's that even possible? I thought the lowest is zero. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> okay, first of all, I don't know what you did to your loot filters. But why do you have yellow items? To be honest, yeah, okay, like, to be honest, the weapon the, is not, like, the biggest problem here. It's just, it's just interesting that you have, uh, like, no, no greens. Better than blues. <laughs> yeah, blue, blues are, <laughs> blues are most of the time kind of bad, that's true. Okay, uh, I mean, honestly, like, early on, damage type doesn't matter too much. You're, like, going for, like, a bunch of damage here, like, mostly cold and physical, I feel like. So, what is really good damage is lethal assault, right? This thing here. This thing here is, like, a shit ton of damage early on. Like, just using this is gonna, like, basically double your damage. But, I mean, you're not here for damage, right? You're not actually here for damage. Uh, you're here for... Defense. Okay, what what the fuck is happening though? Wait, your gear has resistances, right? Oh, it's berserk. So like whenever you press berserk, we get like negative resistances, right? Yeah, maybe like don't press this button. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, uh, generally in Grim Dawn, what you want to do early game is you want to get damage. From your weapons and from your skills and everything else should be defense first apart from maybe devotions so what you should do is just like me right i went to the smith and i crafted some components you can go to the smith and i craft components too you can like, craft a anti-venom salve you can craft ward stone like fuck this it's eight percent damage it's like zero damage basically 
that's no damage at all. Uh, get the ward stone. Get another ward stone. Uh, on your rings, put soul shard and soul shard. On your weapons, you want to put, since you want to play pierce eventually, right? You can put, or like you can try crafting, I think it's vicious spikes that you want to craft. Yeah, vicious spikes, you want to like craft dual vicious spikes. Or, if you want like more resistances, you can craft imbued silver or purified salt. These. This gives you like 20% res or chaos and another like 15 bleed on top. Right, this has like your bleed capped, like more chaos, more elemental from like the other stuff. And then your armor rating is below like 92%. You can craft a scaled hide, put it in your, on your uh, shoulders. Uh, you're using some like spirit and defensive ability thing here. Uh, remove that and put your, like put a consecrated wrapping instead. This will give you attack speed. It's like what you actually want on this build. Ruination is fine, honestly, that's fine. Um, you have 15 armor here, that's pretty bad. Mm. Honestly, the helmet, you at this point, you would probably like want either health or emerald. Because there are great ones for the helmet, like runestone and sanctified bone. But you need to buy the blueprints from the factions and you might not be able to buy those yet. But you want these eventually, one of these two. And they craft them as well at the smith, right? Um, so yeah, I would go for health here. And then you have like, you know... Just don't use the skill, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you can like use it if you like wanna burst down something and... I mean, just don't use it, honestly. Is there like a marksman class? Many classes can be played as marksman. A soldier can be a marksman. Inquisitor is like the classic marksman, you could say. Demolitionist is also a great marksman. Even Oathkeeper can be like a marksman. I would say like the most straightforward is probably like a... Yeah, like either Inquisitor plus soldier or Inquisitor plus... Um, plus Demolitionist. Also, you can play Shamans as a shooter as well. Like the Primus Strike skill from Shaman can be played with a two-handed gun. And that is really, really good as well. That is really good. Lock and load is following me in the same second that I'm talking about guns. It's kind of funny. Thanks for the follow and welcome in. And thank you all guys for the follows. I have like follow alerts disabled because I had like some waves of bots like spamming my channel for a couple of streams so I just aired my alerts for those but thank you so much everybody Shaman plus what then? Uh, I would personally I mean shameless self plug right? Go to the first link here click on the first link and then skip to Promise Strike Druid and then watch that part or just watch like my Promise Strike Druid uh, like the guide for Promise Strike Druid in specific. Uh, once you do that, you should know everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. Also, what you want to do is you want to like max out Night's Chill here on this build, right? Because you want like the resistance reduction, like minus Pierce, minus Cold. What this basically does, like resistance reduction in this game is crazy good. Because if an enemy has more than zero resistances, right, this is really useful. And even if the enemy is only zero, like at zero resistances, right, 25% minus means you deal 25% more damage with everything, right? At least with all of your, like, piercing cold damage, which ideally you should only have, like, piercing cold damage. But you don't really have that right now. You're, like, very physically heavy right now, actually. Um, there are some, try to go to, okay, try to go to, try to go to rotting croplands and like try to look for a hive there and then like kill all the insects there and those insects can drop slicers and you want to play two of those slicers. What are they called again? They're, what? Oh, it's a sword, yeah, of course. 
Dermap Terran Slicer, right? You wanna play these. You wanna just like go there and then like farm two of these. You're gonna have like affixes on top, right? Of course, like of alacrity suffix is great. And I mean, uh, the best like common one would be puncturing. This one gives you like flat pierce damage, right? Something like this is what you want. And uh, then you have like probably like triple the damage. And overall like triple the defense compared to before. And yeah, like just just don't use like this this item is like not good. <laughs> it's again one of the blue items of this game that are just trash. This this item like the, the blue items in this game are there are some good ones, but most of the time they're just trash. Like that's just how it is. Unfortunately. Or like they're good for like Like when you get them. They're like good for like 10 levels, and then they're trash. Or like 5 levels, maybe. Blues are better than greens. 99% of the time, no. 1% of the time, yes. I mean, they are a higher rarity, right? They are more rare. But rarity doesn't always mean that they're better, right? Rarity just means that they're harder to find. But it doesn't mean that they're better. One guy today asked how to does Ava Dangerous Domains because he kept dying in Act 2. He said, even though he was using full blue gear, he died all the time. I mean, maybe he was dying because he was using full blue gear. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like, blue gear is... I mean, even Xanta himself said, like, basically, like, blue gear was a mistake, more or less. I mean, they could just, like, buff blue gear as well. But I mean, some blue gear is fine, but they... I feel like they're like too lazy to like go through all the, like the trash blue gear. And they instead like just want to like count on like players using their brain to figure out that like blue gear isn't that great. Um, and I'm using like one belt here, for example. Like this is okay, that's an okay blue. But like this item right here, right? This item is total utter garbage. You would never use this for anything, I think. Like, it's so bad. <laughs> like, why would you play this item? It's so fucking bad. Actually, it has, like, 10% resistance reduction. So, like, you could play a caster with this, maybe. The thing is, like, blue, blue gear used to be, like, somewhat decent. Like, in 2006. But I think, like, ever since, like... Or, like, 2016, rather. <laughs> uh, but, like, ever since, like, 2018... Like, ever since the first expansion, like, Blue Gear is just utter garbage. Apart from, like, some specific ones. Plus four to Curse of Frailty. <laughs> Dude, it's like... Curse of Frailty is like a... It debuffs enemy physical and bleed resistance, right? This one deals pure chaos damage. It's not even like matching the damage type. And it needs cunning. No chaos build ever wants to use cunning. And it's a crossbow. But it has basically like caster stats, except for like, okay, like it has like flat chaos damage. And you might think like, okay, I can like make it like a sick like ranged attacker right with this. But the item also has no attack speed, right? It's like so bad on so many levels, it's insane. And like, look at how, like, how many lines there is, right? There's four lines. Look at my weapon. It's like 50 lines. Like, honestly, I, if, I, if I could, I would honestly, like... Ch I feel like what I want to, like, recommend to people that are, like, new to this game, play like this. Like, remove epics. Don't even show epics. Don't look at epics. Only look at greens and purples. Don't even look at blues. They're always trash. Like, not always, but, like... I feel like they are so often bad that you're more likely to get baited to get a... Like, to play a bad blue than, like, to actually get a blue... Like, a good blue, right? But then again, there are some good blue items, like boots can be great, or like gloves can be great, or rings can be great. But like, so many other things are just so bad, like holy fuck. Like leg plates of weather, like blue pants are also great. Or like the Mistwalker that I showed earlier, right, those are also great. 
but so many are so fucking garbage. And people think like they're good, right? Because they're always like higher rarity. Uh, but they're more like meme items, to be honest, I don't know. At least most of them. They're like thematic like roleplay items. But like roleplaying only works to a certain degree. You can argue that like monster frequencies are also too strong. I mean, yes, but like in certain slots, like... It's not even like normal, like it's not monster frequency being too strong, it's just like normal greens, right? Like even these pants... Like I'm using these pants right now over like a blue pair of pants that I found that is actually a good blue pair of pants, right? Like I didn't even find a bad one, but this green is still better and it's not a monster frequent, right? It's just the affixes themselves. You could argue like there's maybe like too much power in affixes, if anything. Blackwood Arbalest and Joyous Rise Up. Yeah, Blackwood Arbalest is like a classic example of like a utter garbage blue item. Oh, there's actually a treasure trove over here. Do I have dynamite? I have dynamite. Okay, let's go into this hidden path here. And use some dynamite on this. Get some... Oh, okay. Like this one, for example, is actually a fine blue item. Right? This is a good blue item. Because it gives you like... Two resistances, right? It's not too bad. Health, physique, and experience gain even. And it has more armor than a current one. So that is actually a good blue item. The other one, Barathorn Band. I mean, it's a ring. If you're playing like a bleed build, sure. Then it's also actually fine. Um, if you're not, then it's probably garbage. Ravager with full blue set when? Maybe next year. Uh, how much physical resistance should I aim for in hardcore? That heavily depends on like what kind of build you're playing, to be honest. Like if you're playing melee, if you're playing a caster, if you're playing range, if you're playing a pet build. It also like depends on like how much armor you have, how much other defenses you have, like how much percent absorption you have, how much armor you have, uh, how much flat absorption you have. Like short answer, it depends, right? Um, usually I try to get like at least 20% on every single build and then if you're like playing a build that wants to play around physical resistance you want like well the more the better some builds can even like get up to 80% that's rather rare I mean, usually, like, a build will have, like, around maybe, like, 30 or 35%, something like that. Squishier builds will have less, tankier builds more. But again, like, a build can be tanky even with, like, 20% fizzerness if it has, like, other defensive stats. And a build can be kind of squish even with, like, 60% fizzerness if it has, like, zero armor or, like, zero absorption and so on. So it kind of depends. Do I have a frozen heart now? I do. Okay, let's finally go back to the shrine and get this one as well. Full blue in the league. Yeah, in the league it's a bit different, I guess. At least like in the last league it was a bit different. Okay, what's happening? Uh, do I have to play a new character after update or will old characters have the new updates? Uh, you don't have to play a new character. All changes are retroactive and you can play your old characters as well. Obviously, like, the stats of your old characters might have changed because, like, some things got nerfed or buffed and, like, some items got buffed and nerfed. So your character might not have the exact same stats as, um, like, it, it had, like, back in, like, whenever you played the last time. But, yeah. This build looks strong and good because it's Force Wave. I mean, it's your favorite skill, right? We all know that. Okay, now we have a Severed Claw. We can, like, put it over here and get another, like, ability, the Brutal Slam. We're just gonna have us like with more single target damage. We can proceed in the broken hills now. In the new version, do you stop going all for Zik? Um that change or like that meta change has happened like about a year ago. Um or like even like two years ago almost by now. But many people either don't play the game at all, or like play the game like using outdated information. Like, ever since they made Cunning and Spirit have more HP per point as well. 
you rarely go full physique actually. If you're playing a build like this, you want to mostly just cunning dump for like... Because like cunning scales your physical damage, first of all. Second of all, cunning gives you offensive ability. And you need offensive ability on physical builds because you want to eventually use this one, Assassin's Mark, for resistance reduction. And this proc only works if you're critting, right? Otherwise it doesn't work. And if this doesn't work, you're going to be ZDPS, right? And then many, like, casters want to actually spirit snack, especially when you're playing Arcanus and you have, like, insane percent spirit scaling. You can get, like, a ridiculous amount of damage from spirit. And physique is kind of, most of the time, just there, either... Like, to just, like, put as much points into physique to, like, be able to wear gear. Or to, like, give yourself more defensive ability, or, like, more health in general, if you feel like you're too squishy. But generally on this update, I would say it is more common to stack Cunning and to stack Spirit than it is to stack Physique, actually. And that has been the case since like two years, so like one year at least. Like that's not a change from this patch, it's, it's an older change. However, I know like people on Reddit and so on, they are, they are like always like three years behind when it comes to meta, to be honest. Which is, uh, well. I don't know. Classic Reddit, I guess. I mean, Hardcore is the same game as Softcore, right? You just... you just don't die. Like, you just don't get hit. I mean, of course, you wanna, like, play more defensively and, like, build more defensively on Hardcore. But, like, just stacking Physique isn't gonna, like, magically make your build tanky. You need other things. And you also need damage, more often than not, to like kill enemies so that you don't take damage from them all the time because if you take damage for a longer time then you're like more likely to die in a way you want to like find the, the right balance between like damage and tankiness and hardcore uh, especially when you're playing leech base right like the more damage you have you're playing leech based the more you also heal so obviously you need damage to heal Okay, we're gonna use these. Let's have uh, casting speed and poison resistance. Very nice, very nice. The rest is... We have a off the feather step here. I think off the feather, feather step also has movement speed, yeah, it does. And these just have like way better base armor value, so you wanna like always upgrade your armor value. Don't sleep on armor values. And like this, this blue item here, right? It's not bad, obviously, right? It's not bad. But honestly, like I could play this one instead. Like it's almost as good already. Like another blue that might be substituted for a green. And let's skip the blue for now, though. It has like very nice stun rust, actually. I I like that. That is pretty good. A rune carved of celerity. Celerity, as you might have uh, remembered, gives you casting speed. So does this damage for force wave. And um, hmm, I could try like if this is more damage or not. So Skinner gives me flat physical damage and percent physical damage, but the constant speed is still more damage. You could like check resistances, bleed versus pierce. I mean, this is like very close, but I feel like I'm gonna actually keep the one I have. Star Wars of Balanced Steel, HP, Resistances. I mean, I could change these. Sure, more armor, higher armor value. Didn't percent crit damage, only get buffed in SR. Uh, it got buffed. It ultimate, I think, in general as well. Didn't, like, percent crit get buffed, like, everywhere? Like, by 5% and, like, an SR by 10% or something like that? Or was it Crucible with, like, 10%? I don't quite remember. Anyway, uh, DA is, uh... Is a bit more important again, yes. SR 10 and Crucible 5. Not in the main campaign at all. Interesting. That's weird. I thought it's like, 5 plus 5 plus 5, but, uh... Maybe, who cares? I 
I think it depends on the build. A lot. Actually, no. Because I think, like, some builds can, like, still get away with, like, ignoring the A completely. And others, like, want at least, like, around 2.6k. Not necessarily, like, the 3k that was, like, meta a couple years ago, but... At least, like, 2.6k is, like, really nice. You have, like, 3,000 the A on your last defender elementalist. Yeah, like, like, on certain builds, you really, like, feel that it helps a lot. I do agree. Still no... I mean, I don't really need Mark with the Traveler right now, I guess. Alright, we're gonna take out the components from these two. There we go. And go back here. Okay. Yeah, Lights Defender is a zero Fizzlers build. It has good armor, right? Lights Defender does have armor, but like Fizzlers is basically zero. Good, you're back. It's like very, very bad. Yo, GG, welcome back, welcome back. 50 months. Holy fuck. Thank you so, so much for the resub. That is absolutely nuts, dude. 50 months. Holy moly. Dude, that's like over four years. What the hell? Thanks so much for the continued support. 25 has rust. That's actually more than I expected from, from Knights Defender. But like Knights Defender is for sure like sub 20. Zero first rust if you are a pet player. <laughs> Wait, all, all pets need 80% physicals and should be able to like tank all super bosses as well, right? Not only the pet, but like the player too, right? <laughs> that is such a stupid argument, holy fuck. Like, I thought Maya was like talking about like the pets being able to tank. But she was like also talking about like the player being able- what? Why would a player like tank on a summoner build in the first place? What the fuck? That is just... Safe dot builds are impossible according to Zentai. Wait, did he say that? I mean, to be fair, like, Maya, like gave like examples for like melee builds that like, can kill Kala in like one minute and stuff like that. Look at this. <laughs> Who made that? Did you make it or is it from the forums? <laughs> Just made it. Dude, you need, you need to like post that. Uh, but yeah, you still don't have an account. Ah, I should like max out squat tactics, right? What the fuck am I doing? Should do some, should do some squats, squat tactics. Six out of ten. If someone can muster a dot build that can wreck a super boss without needing to regularly step into the danger zone to refresh all the dots, then it will be impressive. Wait, does he? Wait, what? Is he serious? Does he not know like how grain out and false wave works? Like grain out and earth splitter works. Like I mean, I kind of agree, honestly. Like with totem builds, even because totems have like a short range, and I, to a degree, also like agree with something like mortar trap stacking and so on. Like, you lose- I mean, you can play them safe, but you, like, lose so much damage then. But a <laughs> fucking Granite Force Wave is, like, one wave attack that has, like, the range is, like, absurd. Like, I don't even have a problem with the damage. The range is absurd. That's why, like, in the league we nerfed the range and not the damage. Alright, we got Waldrax Crusher again. This is a pretty, pretty chunky upgrade. Aegis Dot also stepping into the danger zone. 
To be honest, like, Aegis Dot is not like that big of a problem in the, in the base game. I mean, it it also exists, actually, like, Burn, right? Like, Burn Aegis actually exists in the base game. It's not that bad either. Um, actually, Burn Aegis can be really good as well. I don't know how strong it is. It's not always, like, as strong as, like, the one League build was at some point. But still. Burn Aegis with Thermite Mines XD. Or with Aura of Sensor. I mean, if you're playing Aura of Sensor and, like, a Paladin, right, then you have to step into the danger zone. No, what you play is you play a Cause of Frailty, right? You play a Sentinel. And then... Oh, these are amazing gloves, by the way. You just put Cause of Frailty and then you bonk, right? Okay, we've got some amazing gear here, guys. We've got Mystic of Kings. Honestly, this one is also not too bad. If I wouldn't have Explorer's cover right now, I would definitely play this one. That's pretty good. But yeah, formidable is physical resistance, elemental resistance, and like a bunch of HP. Which honestly at this point is worse than poison rust. Ah. Huh. But this high armor and it is also casting speed. And of course this item is just insane. Kind of. I do lose like the field command away in the A though. Like I actually lose tons of OA in the A here. Because of the officer officer's prefix being like really nice. Hmm. What do I play here? I'm still gonna play the wall drugs crusher, right? I think. Sure, I'll take the hit in Poison Rust, which is generally not really what you want to do, but okay. Um, I think I want to respect my devotions now, because I don't want to, like, keep on using Jackal. Uh, maybe actually I'll never rent. No, I'll, as long as I don't have, like, over 6% overcap on run speed, which is what Jackal gives me, but I will keep using Jackal. Honestly, though, wait, Kraken also has movement speed, right? What are you talking to me? Yeah, this one has 5% movement speed, too. Okay, never mind. Let's go, Kraken. Was Poison Aegis return any good? That was pretty good, yeah. Okay, remove Jackal completely. Remove the red here as well. Uh, finish the spider. Remove this pearl green here as well, right? Like, once you have completed a tier 1 constellation like this, it's, like, self-sustaining, right? You don't need the blue here, you don't need the green here, because these give you six and five back, right? You can take out those points. And now we have four points we can which we can like put in Kraken, the movement speed node, and the casting attack speed nodes over here. That sounds good to me. Okay, we are at Dead Man's Gulch. I should like hand in a couple of quests here that I skipped earlier. Yeah, Poison Retail Aegis was like one of the best builds at some point. I'm not sure if it's still like a top 5 or top 10 build, no, no, no idea. But it's definitely like still viable and still great. Very great still. Uh, well, we're not gonna go to Minova, right? Also, I'm a bad lore collector here. I didn't collect the Forgotten Passages. Oh well. I don't think I'm gonna go back for that one. Yeah, no. Probably also won't go to Sifts of Torment anytime soon. Uh, this quest is nice because it gives you like an attribute point to spend. I don't think I'm gonna spend it right now though. Maybe later. Let's go to the Gulch. And create another Grim Tools link for what I have right now. After respecting to the Kraken. Promise Strike feels amazing. It sure does. Well, yep. I haven't been, it, I came up. It sure does. Hmm. 
Best Sprit Pokemon and uh, I guess goodbye. Have a good weekend. Haters. Oh yeah. Take care man. Thanks for stopping by. See you around. I mean, like, speed-wise, right, like, farming speed-wise, dot casters are obviously, like, not the best farmers. They are, honestly, on this patch, better than before. Um, but not necessarily, like, the, the world record, like, farmers, right? For bossing, however, they are, like, giga-safe. And arguably as safe or even safer than pet worlds now. Probably safer even now. And pet pills used to be like basically the safest option in the past. At least for like all celestials that are not called creative entertainment. But then again, celestials aren't like the most important thing to balance around, I feel like, in this game. But when something is as ridiculous as like Grey Knight range, Force Wave Grey Knight range, it's. It is a bit weird. We got another like of supremacy suffix on the medal, by the way. From Ikrix's medal. And Ikrix's medal is honestly like pretty nice. Uh well, it's actually an overguard and resilience medal, which we can't really use. Like we can't use those skills. However, it still gives me like base percent armor. And like some physique at the A. It's definitely better than my current one. It's not too bad. I'm good find. Ah shit, maybe I should have like kept the poison us. Taking some damage here. Why not Bone Talisman? I and mean, you can play Bone Talisman if you want to, right? But I mean you have like infinite pots now. And I'd rather just get the movement speed from like movement speed and resistances from equilibrium nowadays. I kinda... I mean I used to like use Bone Talisman all the time and it's still not bad, like definitely not. Like if you don't know what to pick, like just play Bone Talisman for leveling, it's fine, like... It's totally fine. Uh, I do feel like it's worse than in the past comparatively though. Yeah, like equilibrium like gives you everything you want early game. Like the movement speed is something you like struggle up like with early game usually. Elemental rust is not necessarily something you like really struggle with too much, but you just want it to be like at 80% like ASAP and it does help with that. Uh, over here at this detonation site, if you have dynamite, you wanna leave a portal there. So that you can go there after finding the rift gate at Homestead. Do you is still bad? Nope, it is actually pretty good. I would say. It's pretty good. I mean, I like it. I just never play it for some reason, but I actually like it a lot. I've been expecting you. Jen Shinigami, thanks you so much for the Prime. Welcome to the Bloomers. Much appreciated. I'm pretty good, it's kind of a stretch. I mean, it's not great. It's not the best skill ever. But I think it's pretty good, yes. And it's kind of like cocktail in a way. I guess after the cocktail buff, maybe like worse than cocktail. I don't know. What's the best dot build after internal force wave? That has the same application range. Dude, like even bleeding blade spirit have like a way shorter range. Oh look at this, some actually good blue pants, right? Like some good blue item. 
Brimstone is actually also not too bad if you like playing some fast track character. Swamp Dwellers. This would fix my Paladin Rust nicely. Yeah, let's actually play this. I like it. Max is out the Paladin Rust. Do I have a guide for the Ultra Elementalist? Not yet. Not yet. I will probably make one very soon though. Ah oh my god, I'm stupid. I left the portal, right? <laughs> and I said we can like port back there, but then I like went back to town now with my personal portal instead of this one, so now it's gone. Oh well. Do as I say, not as I do. Classic. Also these guys, like these flesh warped trolls, they can drop some sick gear to be honest, like chest, shoulder, helmet, especially helmet, that's really nice. But even the shoulders can be so nice. What is the scroll here? Shrewd of Thorns. Okay, that one's terrible. Like, Thorns is always like retaliation. And Shrewd prefixes percent cunning, which is not the worst, but it's kind of bad as well, to be honest. Uh, where's my slam? 5k. 10k highest crit. It's okay for this level, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You should, like, port back from Portland stone. Any link to the gold build on the water? I have for the water. I mean... I have a link for, like, if you have insane gear. But if you have, like, all the gear for this build, you can, like, play something like this. Um, that would be like my personal like new like hardcore take on like Avenger Water. I know um, other people in chat might have like a link for the like softcore take or like a more damage oriented take, which is obviously like just as good or arguably maybe even better, depending on like what kind of items you have. For the build. Without like items, I don't have a build for end game right now. Like a like a budget version, I don't have right now. Um, but I will have it like soon, soon, soon. I mean, I have a I have a guide for a. It really found the venom. How? Um, I have a guide for the promise strike druid. Right, you can like check out the druid instead. But for elementalists, I don't have a guide yet. We get an end game tier that's for hardcore soonish. I mean, I kind of dislike doing tier lists like at the start of a patch. On the other hand, I know like at the start of a patch, people want to watch the tier list. Um, even though it kind of like makes not that much sense to do the tier list at the start of a patch because you don't know like all the builds quite yet. Um, tier list of best Xantai quotes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously it, for like views and so on it makes more sense to do like a tier list now than later. So I, I guess I should make one, yeah. Top 10 1.2 patch videos. Should we like react to like another top six? Oops. Obviously you wanna save your wait for that orange glow on the tail swipe. Uh, level 32 for this item, it's a very nice unit. Financially reliant on YouTube slash Twitch or Greed. <laughs> I wish I could live off YouTube and Twitch to be honest.
what I live off right now. Basically, I mean, partially I do live off YouTube and Twitch. And then I just like live off like my prayer savings for my family, I guess, maybe in the partial ways as well. You could say that, something like that. Like, I don't think like I'm actually making money. I'm more like, I'm like doing this for like four years. And like, I feel like in the last four years, my bank account was either stable or like just slowly like going down and down. I mean, it's fine. Like, I'm not gonna starve tomorrow, but like, you don't make enough for like YouTube and Twitch if you're like my size to like actually live with it. I mean, you can like live with the salary, I guess, like in in some like third world country, sure, but not like in uh, in a country like Germany. Förderung vom Staat war schlau. Na. I was not smart enough. Germany at least has third world internet. That's true, that's true. Can't live off Xantar memes alone. I do have to play Assassin's Mark on physical iteration build. Uh, yes. If you want to actually deal damage, then yes. Which means you need to stack the fuck out of cunning and get offensive ability as a physical iteration build. Um, so, okay, so like officially, right, on paper, I'm still a student right now. <laughs> uh, I, I I'm a student since like 10 years on paper, pretty much. Officially. I mean, I, I like worked here and there stuff. But I am still a student on paper. I studied uh, biochemistry first. Uh, then bioengineering and currently I'm studying like on paper at least IT. Computer science. But... I'm more like studying Grundon builds, let's be honest. <laughs> oh yeah, you're studying biology as well, right, Kree, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I have like a lab coat and like all the stuff. Like, I was like almost done with my bachelor's and then... I fell into like basically depression and... Uh, then I got kicked from, from my uni. Because I didn't like do enough enough exams, basically. Not the best time for getting into IT. I mean, why not? Just because it's terrible in Germany doesn't mean like it's not like good overall. Like it's gonna be obviously relevant everywhere. Same story, more or less. Yeah, I mean, I feel you. You feel me. <laughs> Hard to find a job. I mean, I have a couple of friends that are in IT. They never had trouble getting any jobs ever. To be honest. You just uh, watched my six worst builds video and you laughed your ass off. Glad you liked it. But yeah, uh, you, know, you might be right, like right that it's like harder and harder because like more and more people are studying it, like doing it nowadays. But I mean, I think like the demand is still there. Like from what I've seen and heard, like it should be still there at least. I don't know. Quick, like country's second best uni, and went home to attend some shithole. Yeah, I want. I went to the on paper best university in all of Germany. But yeah, like if you if you don't like deliver, they don't care if you're like depressed or not, right? If you don't deliver, they just kick you. And I mean, uh, that's that was like unfortunate, like what happened eventually to me. And I could like kick myself in the balls for that like every single day for like not just finishing it back then. But I mean, what can you do, man? Depression is just like it's not. 
It's just like very, how do you say that? It's not as easy to handle as some people might think. Like, I had like... I don't know, like... Really good A-levels and like... Good degrees at first in uni as well and then... Just all went south. But, uh, what can you do? Good thing you managed to get the finished uh, degree, yeah, like, uh, getting at least, like, one degree, honestly, I feel like I, I could, like, work, like, pretty much everything that I studied, I could, like, work in all of those fields as well, like, obviously not, like, in, like, high-end jobs, but at least, like, some, like, you know, like, some, some low-end jobs at least, I could, like, definitely work there, but, like, if you don't have a degree, at least in Germany, like, they're like, you don't have a degree, okay, like, here you go, like, you get one euro per hour, right, <laughs> it's like, like, what? They just like don't pay you shit. And then you're like, well, guess I'll just uh, keep streaming for now. I mean, in like in the end, right? Like the, the thing is like, when people say like, just don't be depressed, right? Just fix it. They're not like necessarily wrong. But it's also not that easy. They are wrong. I don't know. I feel like whenever I'm like deciding to not be depressed and actually like get my ass up, like those are the best days. So in a way it works. But I don't know. <laughs> To do 3k netto in Germany is like 5k brutto. Yeah, I mean that's like that's like a it's like a reasonable salary, I feel like. And honestly, like everything below that in Germany is nowadays, like it's just underpaid. Like not even kidding. Grundon has multiplayer trading. Uh Grundon has no like trading sites and Grundon has no servers. The only way to trade in this game is to like Tell some random people like on Discord to like uh, I don't know like to open up a local like multiplayer game in their PC and then like join it via like peer-to-peer -peer connection and then you can trade with them. Yes, you can trade with like people in the same game, but like setting up multiplayer and so on is like a bit you know you have to like find the people first and there's like no in-game chat and stuff like that. There's no servers. Um, how the fuck is 5k brutal like 2k netto? It's um. It's more like 3k, right? You pay like, what, 45% taxes? I think. Or you can just be like... Self-employed like I am right now on paper. And then you have like 25k per year free without taxation. That's like basically like what I'm... Living off right now. I don't know, like, the way, like, taxes... ...are being raised is just so bullshit. Like, it should take, like, way longer until you get to, like, certain uh, thresholds, but, like, you get to, like, certain thresholds, like, so quickly, it makes no sense at all. It's so bullshit. Like, it's... It's just stupid. So, like, if you, like, earn... Not that much, like me right now, it makes more sense to like be actually self-employed because then you have like double the amount uh, per year that's tax-free basically. Professional chef in Germany? Oh yeah, I have a friend that is a chef as well. It's also like another or rather underpaid job I would say, but like 2.3 to 2.5k is already like kind of decent actually for like a chef I think. It's not that bad for like a chef. Because I think he like for example my friend I think he like earned even less for like a long time at least. Like a, like a lot less I think actually. I mean I'm not saying like what you're earning is like little. It's like if you, if you compare it right to like the the average or like the medium. It's, it's kind of close to average I think actually. 
But yeah, 5k net uh, brut should be like 3k net around because that's like 40 ish percent. 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so like either you're paying too much taxes or you're like earning 4.5k net brutal rent right, maybe. Depends on insurances too. Yeah. Like insurances can cost like a ton as well, that's true. Or like they generally just cost a ton as well, yeah. That's true. Free health insurance. I mean it's like it's like free when you pay for it. <laughs> Like, some people, like, from outside, like, think, like, oh, you have, like, free health insurance in Germany, right? Well, it's free if you, like, pay, like, ah, 150 per month, yeah, then it's free. But, I mean, that's still, like, nothing compared to other countries, so, like, I, I also wouldn't compare, like, I complain about it at all. Like, it's still, like, totally fine, honestly. Uh, thank you so much for the sub as well. Uh, Hornwooks, thank you so much for the gifted sub to host positive. Congrats, congrats. Welcome to the Bloomers. Uh, this one has more cost since he's beat than my current one, right? However, it doesn't have the formidable physicist prefix. Hmm. Formidable of blood. Da, 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 da. What are these? Start with a flash arc. Stonehide. Now, Stonehide has like very nice like resistances and armor. But of blood is like only bleeding damage, and I don't really need poison rest right now that I have these boots. I mean pants. So while they are good in general, like while this is good in general, I'm not gonna play it here. Uh, this belt, unyielding prefix is pretty nice. Of oh, scorching is obviously only fire damage. That's kind of bad. Resistant of scorch runes. This is like elemental stuff, but it's also like a shit ton of resistances. The problem is though, it's like elemental stuff which I don't need. Dude, I have like 69% overcap on elemental. I mean, that's nice, but it's also useless. That is nice though, but useless. Hauka Kobok. Yeah, I have, I think, um... Yeah, like our, our car is, uh... Insured over like Kobok, yeah. The car insurance is from Kobok. Yeah. Impenetrable of Supremacy. This is an insane belt. Okay, we're gonna play this one level 30. This has Pierce Rest on the prefix and like Supremacy suffix, has plus the Force Wave, physical damage, and Chaos Rest. This is very, very good. It's kind of what you want. Rune Carved of Celerity. Well, that's just like. Elemental dodge. Hmm. Alright, this is all bad. This one is uh, like another like blue meme item, I feel like. Now overseer is a great prefix. And this has armor, however I would lose like Pierce and Chaos Rust, so it is debatable whether or not I should use that item to be honest. Let's sell all the rest. Mm, this is bad. This is like almost good, but not really good enough. Okay. We could play Fanatics Overcoat. This is actually a good blue item. And I think this item has like huge damage. Almost. The fucking monster frequent is still stronger. Ay ay ay. Like this is an item that like used to be good, for example. It used to be a like, very good blue item. But like some monster frequents or like at least some affixes of monster frequents are just like so much better. Is there actually waiting for legendaries in Grim Dawn? Uh for the random drops, I mean some are like more rare and some are more common, but there is no like waiting, like the random drops, they're like random everywhere, they have like the same like randomness everywhere, but like they're, I mean they have like waiting right, like one item is like more rare than another one, but there's no way to like influence it with like, for example, the class you have or like where you farm it and so on, so. 
Uh, would I go Warlock, Witch Hunter for a Dreek's Evil Eye? Like for Dreek's Evil Eye set. I would probably go Sentinel actually. For Dreek's Evil Eye set. I would play Oathkeeper secondary. If you don't have the Forgotten Gods expansion, I would play Witch Hunter. So Nightblade secondary. Okay, we're gonna keep these items. These seem not too bad. Alright, let's go back here. Choosing the right items and stats is tedious. I love it. I love it. But, I mean, I can see, like, if you're coming from Diablo 4, for so example, good. that it's tedious. Or, like, Diablo 3 or, Diablo, or like, any Diablo game, honestly, maybe then it's kind of tedious. I don't know, I think this is part of, like, RPGs, and I think it's nice. Um, but also, I personally like itemization that, like, makes you use your brain. I don't play RPGs or, like, just blindless, like, blindly slay monsters. Um, I mean, that part is very fun, too, of course. Um, but I like an RPG that has, like... I don't know, like, you thinking about your skills, you thinking about, maybe, like, some passive skills, you thinking about gear, and also, like, you slaying monsters in a good way. There's just tons and tons of stats. Uh, are there really? Not really. I mean, okay, there's like... I mean, there's like tons of resistances, right? There's like tons of like resistances to balance. So this, there are like tons of resistances, you could say. That's true. And then there's like one damage type for like... I mean, there's like one stat for every damage type. But you usually like only want to focus on like one damage type anyway. And, like, all resistances do, like, the same thing, right? They just, like, increase the resistance for that damage type. All damage percent things do the same thing. They just, like, increase the damage for that damage type. So, while, yes, there are many different ones, they aren't, like, actually that different. Um, some damage types have, like, some different mechanics. Like, physical damage, or, like, chaos damage, or pierce damage, or bleeding damage, or aether damage. Um... They, they do have some, like, slight differences. But it's not, like, a big difference. Uh, do I use any mods? I use the Rainbow mod, yeah. The Rainbow mod does make it, like, a little bit easier, right? For example, here you see, like, this is a rare base. The Water Crusher is, like, a rare base, which is why this is, like, green. It's so-called Monster and Frequent. This also is indicated in the base game by, like, the, the symbol here, right? The symbol tells you, like, it's a, like, kind of, like, special green item, like, a better-than-average green item. Uh, then the suffix is a rare suffix, and the prefix is a common prefix. And you kind of like know, okay, this is like a, you know... It's overall like a good item, obviously. But you can like... Gauge the uh, strength of this item a bit more easily if you're playing the rainbow mod. And also it makes it like a bit easier to like spot stats on the item, right? Because like for example health, or like generic stats are gonna like be pink. Um, DA is gonna be like green. Vitality, resistance is like... Dark red, aether is like teal, elemental is like yellow, poison is obviously green, and so on and so on, right? So that's make it like arguably easier to like read these items, especially if you're like a new player. Um, you could also like argue like it makes things like have too much clutter, but I think overall it makes things like a bit easier to read than by default. You compare D4 items to D Grindel items with components and augments. It's like reading a Kuhn versus theory in quantum physics. Uh, when it comes to stats that matter, maybe. When it comes to like stats that exist overall, I don't think so because like Diablo 4 has like five billion stats that are also like all useless, right? Like all this like damage while it's like before 8 a.m. in the morning and you have like still your I don't know, like your shoes on or stuff like that, right? So... I don't fucking know. Like, D4 is like so much conditional bullshit. That is all just like, clutter to read and feels terrible to play around. I think D4 actually has more stats than Grindorm. It's just all of them are useless, so like you don't look at them. Or like all of them just feel bad, so you just ignore them. Whereas in Grim Dawn, like, the stats that exist, they actually make sense and they are needed. Not all of them are always needed and you need to, like, prioritize others, like, some over others, of course, but... 
I don't know, I think like items from Grand Dawn are fine, like they're not as crazy as like endgame PvE items. Definitely not. They're not as like brain dead as Diablo 3 items. And they're not as like cluttered with like trash stats like Diablo 4 items. The weight is fucking awesome, glad you like it. I kind of um, was very skeptical about the weight at first, but after playing with it like for a long time now, like I've played like the playtest since like the last two, almost three months now as well. Uh, it very much grew on me and I think it feels like very good for gameplay flow now. Light radius? Okay, light radius like might be a useless stat in Grand Dawn, that's true. Also kind of rotate bind, that's the default like uh, mouse wheel. You can just hold down the mouse wheel and then you like, you move your mouse. Blocker convergence in Grim Dawn. I don't think like block is useless, it's just like arguably the worst defensive start. Even block like can be useful sometimes. Very rarely so, but And I mean conversions are like a core part of the game. Some conversions and some items are a little weird though and make like no sense and I think should be changed to like, you know either remove some clutter or like to make the item actually useful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I agree though, like Block block could be like made a bit more easy to do in conversions, as I guess maybe as well, yeah. There is some stuff in Grand Dawn that's like not straightforward at all. Definitely not. And it's not as like complex as PoE. Definitely not, but it is more complex than like Diablo 3 or like Diablo 4. Like it is somewhere like in the middle between. And I personally like it this way. Uh because I don't know, I, I don't want this game to be like Diablo 3, where you have like nothing to think about. Uh, I like Grim Dawn for what it is, but I do agree that like some things could be like at least UI wise or something like like or like calculation wise like a bit like streamlined and like made easier. Put block after resistances period. That would make more sense, yeah, for sure. I mean, they would have to like nerf numbers obviously and like adjust numbers, but it just makes more sense. It just like, I don't know why why the, the formula is the way it is. And I mean, they could just change it, right? I don't know why they're not changing it. Thoughts on Titan Vice 2? I mean, I'll, I'll play it, I'll check it out. But I mean, we know nothing about the game, right? So I don't think there's like much to comment on. I mean, the trailer looks cool. That's all I can say. They haven't like really spoiled anything really, did they? And they said like it's gonna be an RPG, right? That's like all they said. The new Last Epoch trailer also looks good, that's true. Well, Last Epoch is a decent RPG, I think. I feel like Last Epoch could be better though. They still have like so many issues to fix. I hope they're gonna like fix at least the more important ones until like full release. They still have like lots of work to do. You're more hyped for Old's baby than for Last Epoch though. Wait, Old is gonna be a dad? Hog? Holy. Same release date? <laughs> that's that's actually kind of funny. That's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> that sounds good. Alright, this poison can be scary if you have like bad poisonous. Don't die to this place. Warmongers spoilers. I remember like playing Grim Dawn like seven years ago. And this was a good item. Is it a good item right now though? Honestly, at this point it is, because my items are pretty shit, or like my shoulder is pretty shit. But the chances of like getting a better item than this is uh, very high to be honest as well. That's the box stinky. I wouldn't call it stinky, but 
it's not like the best either. Holy fuck, I'm sorry. What about the movement speed? Oh, I'm like exactly at the, the cap, right? Yeah, we can't really like move movement speed then. Also, leveling might just be the most boring shit. Uh, it's more exciting than like cadence leveling though. To be honest, I like it more. It actually is somewhat fun gameplay. Feel free to, feel free to disagree, of course, though. This ring from Goddess can be really, really nice. It's not the best rolls, though. What it never grabs uh, Isaac's shoulders and Solar Sack pants in your playthroughs, by the way? Uh, I do sometimes, actually. I do, I do. I do, actually, very often. I just usually, like, do Hidden Path, like, in one go and, like, don't do it, like, right away. So I get, like, Solar Sack pants later. Or Dreek Sack pants. They both can be really good. And Isaac shoulders, I mean, yeah, I sometimes get them, but most of the time I honestly, like, am just too lazy to even, like, walk there. And while, yes, they are great for, like, level 1 uh, shoulders, and you should get them if you didn't find, like, any others in Act 1. And by the time you get to, like, Act 2, you're gonna get, like, better shoulders very soon anyway already, so, like, the time frame in which, like, which they are useful is, like, not that big anyway. Thoughts inside Quest 1. I mean, it's a good game for like 2006. Yeah. I mean, nowadays I would just always play Grim Dawn over it though. Worst part about blocks is that it actually has less percent efficient value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a total mess. Like, I don't know why it's like that. Like, isn't that just like numbers? Like, Crate has like full agency over that, right? W w why aren't they like fixing that? I mean, I know, like, some things of Grim Dawn are, like, still, like, old-school spaghetti, like, Titan Quest code, but, like... That should be just numbers. That's so weird. Plus 8% shield damage blocked. Yeah, like, those stats are... I don't know. I hope they can, like, fix shield block, like, with the expansion. I really hope, actually. Because, like, you're right, like, shield block is pretty much the only... I feel like inconsistency, like the actual, like, the only real, like, inconsistency in this game that, like, feels so weird for a game that's, like, otherwise very well made and, like, I don't know, like, overall, like, good balance, I think, and, like, that's just so weird. Makes no sense. I mean, it is a relic from Titan Quest, right? But like, they can't just fix it, right? Like, they have programmers on their team. I mean, they already like f changed so many things in this game. I mean, they have a fucking weight skill now. Even like, come on, don't tell me they can't like fix shield block when they have a weight skill in the game now. I mean, you could, like, argue, like, yeah, but, like, maybe, like, doesn't make, like, any financial, like, sense. There's, like, no financial incentive to, like, make a... to fix shield block. No, I, I mean, I think it does, but... I want to like this, I really do, but every time I make a new demolitionist and play it for a amount of time, I just find myself not killing things with any speed of time uh, or efficiency. Backwater cocktail is the main issue for this. I think. Point for point is the weakest active ability in the entire game. <laughs> Not sure if it's a back-end issue. Yeah, it's definitely like a back-end user issue, that's true. It's uh, an issue that's like between the screen and the, and the keyboard, that's for sure. Like a between the chair and the keyboard, rather. But when I play anything else, I find the points spent in the active abilities, in their active abilities, hit harder. I guess 70% is hard-coded. I mean, they can change hard code too, though, right? Right? You just watch the guide and does not mention the augments for movement. Yeah, because those were not important enough to, like, make the cut for, like, a two minute per, per build. Uh, obviously, right? Um, I mean, I know you're memeing. Obviously. 
because of uh, a certain other dude pointing out movement abilities like they're the most important thing of the entire build. Which they're not. I mean, TLDR, just like, play whatever you want, right? Buff or remove demolitionist? <laughs> Dude, some people... Uh, like, what? They just need to, like, get good, like, holy fuck. Did they, like, watch too much, like, Senator G or, like, Professor Wright or what? Like, what are, what are these takes? It's like saying, I don't know, like... Like, re remove uh, remove Necromancer from Diablo 4 because I didn't figure out how the class works. Like, what? I feel like some gamers are just... It's like the online version of, like, a Karen. But, like, with even less brain. Dude, the guy just doesn't understand like how the skill works. Like he just sees the number and he's like, oh number is smaller, so this must be worse, right? He doesn't understand that like like with a cochlea once it lands, it like ticks every fucking second, right? Whereas Vix of is a one time hit. Saw a guy yesterday saying that Lokar was bugged because he kept dying with his 12k HP on life. He was saying he was playing for close to 1k hours. <laughs> By the way, your name. Didn't you say like last time like Lokar doesn't stun on every single like auto attack? I checked again, like I checked all of my videos. He does on every single attack. Like he has the animation every single like spike attack. Like I'm 100 percent certain he does on every single like time he like spawns the cone. With the three spikes, he has the animation above his head and he does thunder on every single one. Like, I'm still 100% on that. What's the point of that? Of having that symbol? I mean... To, like, show you that it does it? I mean, you can await some of them. You can't await every single one, sure, but, like, you can await, like, quite a lot of them. I mean, you, you might have, like, dodged it with, like, like, I don't know, like, DA or something. Uh, is my asset provision build still good to go for 1.2? Yes, it is uh, one of the... It, it, like, if I made, like, a top 20 beginner builds, it would have been in there as well. I uh, just didn't make the cut for that top 10, but, yeah, it's, it's definitely, like, a top 20 starter build for sure. It's pretty good. Like if you want to play like, I, I think it's the best like starter retaliation build you, that you can make. If you have like no gear and so on, it's 100% of the best. I think I want to play this one, right? Dude, I'm like dropping Aether as to 6%. But I mean, I'm gonna go to like Blood Grove next now, and for Blood Grove, you want to get Chaos and Vitality Resistances. Which are honestly kind of hard to get, at this point. But... Okay. We're gonna go back here real quick and hand like um, remove the components and like reapply them on the new belt and the new metal right? Good, you're back. Remove this, remove Shadow that. Strike. Enjoy reporting for duty. Yeah, adjacent. Thanks for the resub. Shadow Strike enjoyers, rejoice! Welcome back to the bloomers. 
Hey, what? Okay. What's my movement speed? It's still 135%. Okay, okay, okay. It's level 36. Okay, we're gonna like, we have to wait a bit here. What about devotion points? I have four more now. Okay, I wanna go for... Um... I mean, honestly, I could get, grab like a quick ghoul now to like just fix my... All of my like leech issues. I probably won't play ghoul later, but honestly, like right now... It's the quickest way to like fix my leech. So let's actually play it for now. And then I'll play, I'll like, go into Assassin's Blade next. Is Vitality our reckoning still a gear chant? Uh, it should be, yeah, it should be good. There was much ice my scouts have like Oppressor or Sentinel. Just the person. There are two other. Should be good. Okay, do we decide with comments chosen or with the other guys here? I think it doesn't really matter, does it? It's kind of whatever. Oh wait, I didn't even need the ancient armor plate anymore, right? Got like enough armor absorbed from Scars of Battle now. Uh okay, we'll fix that later. I have come to represent For kiting builds, 30% physics can be enough. Or even 20 or even less to be honest. Um depends on like what you're playing exactly. Isiger Eismann. Uh, I've been expecting you. you Vielen Dank für das Amazon Prime. Welcome to the Bloomers. Much appreciated the support. Uh, for the meta builds, you might want to have like 50 plus. Wait, wait for what? What are you saying here? Nah, I mean, for the base, like. Nah, you don't usually like need that much. Like, I mean, it heavily depends on the build, like, it depends on your damage, it depends on your leech as well. Like, most builds I think are, like, fine with, like, 30 to 40 percent, if you like playing melee. Depends on your armor, though, and, like, depends on, like, the class and etc, etc. 75, you wouldn't want to have less. Dude, sometimes you sound like Maya. <laughs> like, I need my build to be, like, Giga Immortal, otherwise I don't play it. I mean, of course, like, in hardcore, you want to, like, be safe, right? And, of course, like, the more you have, the better it is. 12% is definitely too low, though, yeah. 100%. Why would I want to play bad builds? <laughs> so you're saying Avenger Giga Tank Water is a bad build because it only gets, like, 45% physics instead of... 50. Actually, no, Avenger. Wait, how much does Avenger get? Wait, no, Avenger actually has 63% or like 60%. Okay, never mind. If you have armor, you need less. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's fair, that's fair. If, like, if you don't have armor, then you need like 50, 60 if you're like playing melee, yeah. That's true. If you have no armor and like no other defense, then you need like really high arm or like Fizzerness. If you want to play like melee. And, I mean, I still think, like, some Night Blades can, like, get away with a bit less because they have, like, so much dodge. But, I mean, dodge is kind of, like, RNG, of course, right? And, and you can't play around it, though, but if you have, like, a Good, you're back. decent enough HP pool. Thank you so much for the resub. Well enough, 15 billion years already. I mean, months. I mean, 15 months. How are you doing, man? Are you checking out the patch as well, a bit? And if so, how do you like it? Uh, can somebody explain me the order of damage times being converted to others? There is not really an order. They all convert at the same time because you can only convert once. And if you have, like, for example, 50% fire to vitality, 
and you have 50% fire to acid, then you're gonna like convert half of it to acid and half of it to vitality. If you have 100% fire to vitality and 100% fire to acid, then you're also gonna like convert 50% to each. You can see in the top left the difficulty setting and like whether or not somebody is playing hardcore. You can convert 100% physical to aether and 100% aether to physical on the same build. Well, yes, you can, but you can't double convert, right? So you like all aether damage would be physical, like all raw aether damage would be physical after the conversion, and all raw physical would be aether damage after the conversion. So you can do that, but you're gonna still end up with like split damage. So not really something you wanna do ever, but you can. If you want to, for some reason. Yeah, there's... Oh my god, this guy again. Fucking boy bar. <laughs> uh, there's an order, but it only works when there's Trider Mantle and Single Mantle Conversion taking place at the same time. That's true. That is true, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's true. Then there is an order, yeah. If you have, like, Elemental to X and, like, Single Element to X... Does this guy have like sick pistols again? Holy fuck, dude. Chill of Lackfit and Void Touch to the Void. I mean, Void Touch to the Void is like pretty, pretty high damage. Oh, yeah, I know why, like, why you guys said like Creek didn't drop his mental frequency earlier because I filtered them out, right? I removed all items except for 200 melee. And this also affects like uh, monster frequency, of course. So I'm like, not like seeing these pistols here either, which honestly, for this playthrough is fine. Yeah, Bolvar is like a really scary boss this patch. He's not quite as strong as Rutnik, I would dare to say, but he is scary, yeah. He is a pretty hard boss now. He's honestly like, arguably, I mean, depending on your resistances, right, he can be stronger than the pit bosses even. Depending on like the rolls that he has on the pistol, and depending on your resistances, he's a bad boy. He's a real bad boy now. All right, we're gonna go for yellow and then like assassin's blade. That's one right here, right? To get the physical resistance reduction uh, debuff. Is Zarya still a force to be reckoned with? I mean, she's the same as before, yeah. I mean, I never died to her, but. If you aren't careful, you still definitely can die to her, yes. And there's like one way to die to her, and that is if you have like terrible chaos rust, and you have her curse on you, and she summons her crystals, and you don't kill the crystals, and then both crystals zap you at the same time, then you die, right? But uh, you have to let lots of things happen for that to actually happen, right? If you fail any, like all of those steps rather, then you die. <laughs> Does anybody know can Necro perform well in endgame content? No, it's impossible. No one has ever managed to get past the lead with Necro on <laughs> Yes, I mean, okay, first of all. <laughs> I I agree that the question feels kinda like a troll question. For like people that have played this game before, I mean, if you're new to this game, then, <laughs> then I guess it is reasonable to ask like, to ask that question. Um, and also, if I was like trying to counter troll, then I would answer the same as Crab Turtle. The real, actual, unironic question uh, answer though is: all classes, literally all classes, all class combinations can. If you build them right, literally do all content in the entire game. If you can't do all content on your build, it's a skill issue. That's just it. That's just how it is in this game. If you can't do all content in this game on your build, it's a skill issue. Or it's a you haven't farmed for enough items yet issue. Like this game is probably the most fair and most balanced RPG there is in the entire world right now. Like not even kidding. And if you fail, then it's a skill issue.
It's strange how it was perceived that way. I mean, Grim Dawn just has like a good track record of like being this much like viable for like all builds and like all classes. That's why like for a veteran it seems like a weird question. But also like coming from other RPGs, right, I can understand that question because most other RPGs don't have like this kind of balancing that Grim Dawn has. Most other RPGs just have like a couple of classes that are like I mean, okay, first of all, like, most other RPGs, apart from maybe, like, Path of Exile, have, like, maybe, like, two builds for clowns, right, that actually work. Because the others are either bugged or just, like, straight up giga terrible. And then, like, the two builds from class A might be, like, ten times as strong as the two builds from class B, right, and so on and so on. So, and thus, like, class B might not be able to, like, do actual endgame content compared to class A. Is it really banned, or is it because Grimdon is, like, pretty easy? I mean, if you look at actual endgame, I wouldn't say like any class can like completely face roll all endgame either. So I would actually dare to say it is balanced, yes. It is easy and simple for the most part, yes. Some endgame is certainly like... Like you can't like outgear stuff though like in Path of Exile, right? Like in Path of Exile you just like grind, grind, grind. Then at some point you're gonna hit like a spot or like a point where you can just like one shot everything, like including all bosses, right? In Grim Dawn you can never get to that spot, ever. Because there's like not enough like power ceiling for a build to acquire. Yeah, it's it's like the, the, the scaling in Grim Dawn is like very controlled, let's say like that, right? And thus it is also arguably easier to balance than other RPGs maybe. Uh, but like, even if you say like, okay, it's like easier to balance, that's just like... Thus it is like, you know, easier to balance and thus it is actually balanced. Um, like even if you say it like that, I mean, I feel like other games still fail doing that. Like many other games have like the same... Like simplicity of math behind it and still fail. So, I don't know. Dewey has like <laughs> big number of skills gems, but at max maybe 20 are played in a Viper Friend game. I mean, is that really true though? I mean, you could say like 20 of them are like the meta and like 20 of them are like easy to make Viper Friend game. But I'm pretty sure like at least 10 times the amount is also actually Viper Friend game. However, you need to like grind a shit ton for them. So like time investment wise, it's not really like balanced. But. You can get to like a point where like you can like pretty much rough a stomp all content in PoE with I think pretty much any build if you invest like the currency and the time. Right. Like yeah, for example, like look at Meta's builds, right? Like he does like so many like weird builds. Um but he mean he also invests the time and the, the currency, so. And like knowledge of course as well. Methods builds aren't good though, they're softcore. Like, what, are like all softcore builds bad now? <laughs> Method also dies like 500 times than I. I mean, if you take like the standards that like Illuminator had himself earlier, right, then you might be right, maybe. To be honest, I'm not like an uh, like super expert for Path of Exile, like, I can't really like judge it too well. Anyway, if you're playing Force Wave, this bad boy here is what you want to look out for eventually, right? This is uh, amazing for... Or Force Wave, or Pog Wave. It actually got nerfed, but I mean, it's still like the best weapon for leveling for Force Wave. The real question is though, like, do I actually want to keep leveling with Force Wave? I mean, it's just so comfortable. It's, it's really like so fucking comfortable. Uh, even on a class that like isn't really made for it, like water. I'm not even a water yet, I'm just like a pure soldier. Uh, I mean, ideally, right, you would like to like level with like the theme of what you want to play later, like savagery or cadence. I mean, usually savagery. But like, force is just so much better, like... For leveling, you're like safe, right, like if your resistances are low, you don't have to face tank and so on and so on. 
Anyway, uh, we're about to fight Zarya, and Zarya is the one I mentioned earlier with like the crystals and so on, right? And uh, she's does debuff on you, right? Which, as you can see, like reduces your resistances by a lot. So if you have this icon on you, and she sounds the crystals, well, either you just like kill her before she sounds the crystals, right? If she has these crystals up and you have this on you, you have to kill the crystals, and then you're fine. If you don't kill the crystals and you have the icon on you, and they zap you, then you might die. Is there a reason why components don't stack anymore? They still stack though. Wait, do they not stack for you? Maybe it's bugged for you. Oh, yeah, it's a bug, I think. It already got reported on the forums, I think. Um, hopefully it gets fixed soon. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's definitely a bug, like 100% a bug. You might want to check on the forums. Um, or maybe like somebody else has like the, the, the thread even, where it got mentioned. I'm not sure what to do in that case, to be honest. I, I don't know. It's funny how you say a is so much better, but when people ask you what's OP in the end game, you're like, play whatever you want. I mean, for like end game. Okay, so like, if you're playing Savagery, right? But like Savagery to like feel good, first of all, you need to like fix your resistances and like fix your armor at all times because you're playing literal melee, right? Which requires you to have like a better baseline of defenses, honestly, than like a mid like a mid range wave ability like this. Um, second of all, right, Force Wave just has like. You need like only 16 points here and 12 points here and 1 point here and that's all you need right? That's kind of all you need. Whereas Savagery needs like the base skill and then you also like to get like AoE you need like weapon pool skills right? I don't know like I feel like Savagery just like needs more investment to like properly work. And like once you have the investment, like once you have the skill points to invest that, then it's like totally fine like great. But before that point like a skill that needs less investment is just better right? That like le needs less investment and like makes it so that you're you have like an easier time playing around, not having to get as many resistances. Like it's just so quick, like you like you press the button once and like entire pack dies, like of thrash mobs at least, and then you can like move on to the next and to the next and to the next pack, right? With savagery, you you either like only attack one mob at a time, or you like hope to like proc a weapon pool skill, and then you have like AOE, right? But like only if it procs, and like proc chances are kind of bad if you don't invest that ultimate. Also, that game kind of feels slow even with good damage. Yeah, it does drop up quite a bit. Um, there are, however, like even end game builds that can make it like really good. Um, some of which are arguably the safest, like, Celestial Killer in the entire game. Um, others, when it comes to spam, are, like, not bad, but, like, amazing either. They're, like, somewhere, like, in the middle of the pack, I feel like. Definitely, like, a fine ability. But... The second issue might come from people playing Season 5 on 1.2. Wait, are you playing Season 5 on 1.2? That doesn't work. I hope you're not. Are you playing Season 5? Yeah, that doesn't work right now. If you wanna uh, play Season 5 right now, you have to downgrade to 1198. But like, if you're playing Season 5, then you should also notice that like, all items have lost their color and you have like, zero faction reputation and everything like that, right? Like, it doesn't work. Like, there's like, tons of stuff that doesn't work. Like, not being able to stack components should be like, the least of your worries. Because the entire mod just doesn't work, because like there's so many like things that have been changed. Uh, the seasons are community driven. Uh, 
it's currently like off season and currently um, where you can still play the mod, but you can still like play the, the seasonal mod. But it's not like official, official. When it's actually out though, like the next season is gonna be on this patch as well. Um, you're gonna have like features like global in game chat, trade via website, a ladder, like all the stuff that like a season has. So, in a way, it is basically like a season, like a PoE season and so on. Just like, not official, but like community made. Um, which, honestly, is not much worse than an official one. I would dare to say. Like, many people have said it's, it feels almost as if it's official. So, if you are interested in like checking out seasonal content on this current patch, then... You should uh, keep an eye out for the next season. That's probably gonna start like early next year, I would say. We'll see. Yo, Shazba, Walkman, Walkman. Also, uh, the seasons don't only have like all the features that I just said, they also have like more end game content. In the form of, for example, like scaling dungeons, like all the dungeons, like Seth the Torment and so on, they can like scale in the seasons. Kind of like SR, like kind of Shadow, like Shadow Ram, they can scale. It has more endgame bosses, it has more items, it has higher build variety, kind of that as well. You can play even more builds if you want. You're here, good. Your, e uh, your year ends next week. <laughs> Somebody is eagerly awaiting next season, I feel like. We're gonna check the season stuff, join the season when it starts, new to Grimdon. Uh, just check out the links here. Uh, like, go to the website grimdonleague.com. We have like a website for the league. And also up on the Discord for the community season. But I mean, we're gonna like do announcements on Discord, on Reddit, on the forums, on fucking Facebook maybe as well. We'll see. Yeah, the website won't ping you. I don't know, maybe you should like do... Like if you're signed up though, I don't know, do you get an email when it starts? If not, then we should add that maybe. I'm not sure if it does. It's actually a good idea, maybe. Like just notify people as, as well as possible. Bosses sometimes do stuff that can kill you. And you killed all bosses with meme builds. Yeah, on the last patch. I mean, the bosses are a bit harder in the new patch. But depending on like, what kind of build you're playing, it's not like that much harder, to be honest. It is definitely harder, noticeably harder, yes, but like not that much harder. I mean, yeah, stuff like Crate is literally unchanged though. Let's go to this character right now. This is just Force Wave for now. Just Boar Wave. Because honestly, it's just like so smooth. There's no reason to play anything else for now. Even though when it comes to like theme, I would rather like want to play Savagery or Cadence with this weapon. But honestly, like even with this weapon, I just want to play Force Wave. Like It's just so good. Isn't that what rocks? I mean, yeah. It is. This this item is, unironically, the best force wave weapon before you can equip a cleaver. I mean, obviously, this is more damage, but it's like level 40. So. Okay. What do I put in the boots? On the new boots? Do I need the movement speed? Uh, I could... Wait, where where was I gonna remove movement speed? 
I could remove like Sato's guide and get Eden Stone. Hmm. All right, all runs rage. This also gives me movement speed, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I really don't need movement speed here then. I mean, I could rather like craft another. Did I need eight rest? Holy fuck. Okay, we can equip this as well. Actually, this gives me the chaos rest. But I would lose that healthy rest. Uh. This also gives me Chaos Rus and Stun Rus. Okay, that's actually a good item. See anything you like? Decisions, decisions. Let's do it like this for now. Uh, I changed helmet, right? Helmet. Uh... And I changed the boots. Let's check a reputation real quick. Once you are respected with a faction, you can buy like actual interesting stuff from it. Okay, let's check Homestead. They might have like a blueprint for a component that I want to craft. Like maybe like a like a rune stone. What is that boss? How can you kill it in melee? I mean, you can. It is very hard though. <laughs> Close to impossible, but you can on certain builds if you're like good at the game and like crazy gear and so on and so on. But it's it's giga risky. I never did it with melee, to be honest. I always did it with like with a caster. Okay, we could craft at least a um We learned to craft a sanctified bone, right? The problem with bone is like it's so expensive. Four salts. Okay, I could like try to make one. Okay, let's make like four salts. One, two, three, four. And we make the bone. And we put the bone zone and the bone. I mean, what? Put the bone zone and the chest. And then put the chest over here. And then we switch the chest. Now we've actually like maxed out chaos rest, which is weird, but that's what it is, I guess. Armor rating is still 100% because of scars of battle. Honestly, what you can do at this point is like you can remove the scaled hide from your pants and instead like use another anti um, ancient armor plating. Because you get like so much armor absorption from soldier anyway for free. Now you have 93%. And then you could like put points in like more points in scars of battle. That's kind of what you want to do anyway because of like the stun rest as well and the bleed rest. So let's do it like this for now. We're gonna like continue putting some more points here to like increase the arm absorption until it's like 200% again. Um, while also like putting some points in all at once rage, of course. Alright. Speak to Brother Eluvius. Okay, let's do that. Actually, I think I need more seals for the quest, don't I? Uh, maybe we don't speak to him yet then. Let's just go to Orlikon then. Who missed you? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, Crab's Paladin is the Lightning Catastrophe build, right? Yeah, that's a great starter too. Uh, do I think Twin Pierce Blade Master is still decent, or do we just just much better? Um, I mean it's still decent. Yes, I mean I mean it's actually yes to both. Like Twin and Pierce is good on Blade Master, but I would dare to say that Duo Wheel is right now better. Like Belgo, Pierce, Blade Master is ridiculously good right now. Yeah, good night, Fromage. Thank you so much for watching. Good night, good night. Dude, we like the... Like, they even buffed Force Wave this patch, right? They nerfed the Cleaver, sure, but like, they buffed Force Wave overall. overall. So like, now it's it's even better when you have Voldrex Crusher. Fucking <laughs> uh, Force Wave. 
Did they? Yeah, I mean, they... Cleaver had 70% weapon damage. <coughs> they, they nerfed it to 40%, but they increased the base physical damage on false wave instead. So, like, if without items, like, early game, it's obviously better than before now, even. And they even nerfed, uh, they actually buffed Green Knight as well, right? Like, how oh, they did. I mean, okay, the, the Green Knight buff was just like a defense buff, but still, like, what? Question mark? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I mean, it was already literally the best leveling skill for a soldier, like, since Grim Dawn exists, pretty much. Like, since ever. Okay, 100% absorption, now we, like, put more points and run to rage again. It's probably a bit worse for endgame. I'm not so sure about that, to be honest. I mean, if you're playing a cleaver build, then yes. If you're not playing a cleaver build, then... It's rather buffed, right? But then again... I mean, like, maybe a Stone Fist Rebuke is better than a cleaver now? Depending on, like, the build. I'm not 100% sure, though. Next week is Thanksgiving. Double damage to your belt size. <laughs> uh, also double damage to all the turkeys in the USA. Yep. Still looks like a kind of... yeah. It, yeah, I mean, people say like, oh my god, it's like the best weapon, right? I mean... I'm still 100% sure that at least like a well, like a well rolled cleaver with like at least one rare affix is still better than a Stone Fist Rebuke. And like with double rares, it's like not even close, probably still. I mean, the gap has been closed a bit, but like by how much, I'm not sure. Yeah, Sun Herald is also like crazy good now, actually. Uh, and Endgame Fire Force we've got nerfed a bit though, I think, or like at least like. He removed like a bit of the flat damage that like the base skill got, so like endgame it might be like about the same. But like for leveling it's feeling better. I mean, as I said, like there's no I don't think there was like a need to make it feel better for leveling because it already like was really fucking strong. Like imagine buffing force away, but like not Penetti, right? <laughs> uh. You need help? What's up? Tell me about your problems. What's the strongest hour acting about in 1.2? I'm probably Cyclone? Question mark? I feel like our reckoning in general on this patch is... Like, okay. Like, it's, it's, it's obviously like a good skill still, but... I feel like, comparatively to other skills, our Reckoning got kind of like the short end of the sticks this patch. But if I had to like say like one single best our Reckoning build this patch, then I thought it would be Cyclone. Not sure how safe it is for Hardcore though, like I know it's like 100% the best for Softcore. For Hardcore, I don't know, not sure. I haven't played one myself this patch. Actually, I did try the Chaos one myself this patch. I was not able to, like, kill Ravager on that one. Like, I I bailed out before I would die because it was, like... I don't know, like, it just felt too scary for me. And I'm, I'm not sure, like, how Cyclone can, like, face tank that, honestly. It seems so weird to me that it can actually do that. I don't know, man. Like, I mean, they got nerfed, right? And, like, people were like, oh my god, it's bad now. And then, like, they rebuffed it again. For some reason. Do you need Paladin for Chaos Hour Reckoning? 
And then what? Then you have like no damage? I'm pretty sure Sentinel is still the best for Chaos Hour Reckoning, but... Isn't Cyclone a bit squishy compared to something like a Gut Smash of Warlord? Hmm... I don't know. What about dual wield like full warborn Eye Reckoning Oppressor, for example? Dreek's Evil Eye, which blade? Kill or keep Anasteria? And depends so much you like her. Would you kill Anasteria in real life? Herald's Mask is actually pretty nice. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's an okay item. These are also good, but like the affixes suck on this one. Oh, same here. Terrible affixes. Good, you've arrived. It's precisely. Honestly, like Anasteria choice doesn't matter too much. Her augments are kind of whatever, and unless you're playing a devastation build, like her items are also kind of whatever. Or like her helmet is kind of whatever. The pants can be good now, actually. Like she got some new pants, right? Compared to like a couple years ago. Um, in real life, you would kill her and take her pants. Officer, this guy right here, right? This guy right here. <laughs> a girl that fucks with your mind that's just like a normal woman. Like any other woman. I mean, depends on the woman. Even in real life, I would dare to say. PC Games has a post about Crimson Update 1.2. 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. I don't know about PC games, I've never like... Is it like an important website? Maybe it is. 9 out of 10 Dark Fantasy RPG gets a massive update to rival Diablo 4. To rival Diablo 4, they say even. Interesting. Grim Dawn, one of the best D2 spiritual successors. Gets a huge update. I mean, yeah, it's a good article, like, it's sticking to generic talk, and, uh... I like when, like, journalists have no idea that they just, like, stick to generic talk instead of, like, trying to be specific and then, like, providing misinformation. Like, if they don't know shit, then they should, like, not try to write as if they know. So that's fine. 9 out of 10, almost as good as Marcus's builds. Dude, like, does he always give, like, all of his builds, like, 10 out of 10? <laughs> like, oh, like, what is that even? It's, like, such a fucking meme, dude. It's like, oh my god, this build, 10 out of 10. This build, oh, also 10 out of 10, right? All my builds are the best builds ever. <laughs> I mean, some of his builds are, like, not too bad, actually. Like, if you're, like, a new player and, like, you're playing, like, a Marcus build, you're probably gonna do fine, but... I feel like none of those are like actual 10 out of 10 builds, they're like maybe like 7 or 8s. Or like 6 maybe, I don't know. I mean it's still like fine. Like it still does better builds than like the average Grimdawn player I would dare to say. But they're not like actually that great. Good night Hornwooks. Good night, good night. Thanks for watching. Does somebody have a Marcus link for you? 
The ragdoll is real. Yeah. The blade arc ra ragdoll notes. That was kind of funny. Oh no, he's gonna thunder me. Maybe not. Maybe next year. Oops. Average Grimdawn player equips Click Soldier and Force Wave. <laughs> I'm average confirmed. Average player here, hello. I'm new to this game. Hi. Hi, hi. Since I'm waiting for the seasons to begin in Diablo 4, this is an absolute this is absolutely a treat in the breath of fresh fresh away from grinding endless dungeons in D4. Thanks for the unique content, being disappointed with the summoner necro on D4. I'm gonna try your pet limits <laughs> here. Amazing. Uh another pocket pet player. Oh well. It's so free. Uh, <laughs> just mention D4 and mention Grindon expansions. By the way, do you suggest buying the entire pack for Grindon? <laughs> or just the base game and then buy the expansions later? Yeah, I mean that's that's true. Like it's 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 it, it is free like it is free like uh respond farming, responses farming. <laughs> that is very true. Quick question, is it okay to skip side quests normal slash elite? Or would you be too underpowered for ultimate? So generally I would advise you to do all side quests because quests in Grim Dawn aren't only that are like they are not only arguably the best source for experience, but also for reputation. And you need reputation to get access to augments, and augments are like your third layer on gear, right? Like every gear is gonna have the base item, like the item itself, right? Then a component on top, and then also a augment on top, right? The augment, you really don't, like you want to have a normal, but like for higher difficulties, you're gonna need to eventually also use augments. And for augments, there is literally only one way to get augments, and that is through faction reputation. Which is why faction reputation is arguably as important as like your levels and because of that you kind of want to do side quests i mean you can skip them though like if you don't if you don't like the quest then skip it sure but just keep in mind that it's, it is gonna like tank your reputation a bit and uh, reputation is very 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 important i i do tend to like sometimes skip some side quests though as well that like aren't really like on the way to the main quest uh, but most of the side quests if you like know what you're doing at least and like you know how to path in this game properly um then you can like do pretty much all of them very smoothly like almost all of them i like to skip like i rarely skip side quests but i do skip maybe like five to ten percent of them um, but yeah, if you are like a new player, I would still suggest you to do all of them. Because most of them are gonna like take you to like a spot where you might have not been before and then and you should like learn all the maps eventually, ideally. I mean all of that said, like don't sweat it like too much, like just play whatever you like. Like play the game however you enjoy the game, right? Is the point in having Rick's associates? Uh, yeah, that's like a Steam achievement, I guess, and also... I mean, they kind of like spawn extra mobs that like, can spawn Forgotten Gods. But I always felt like it was very like low impact, like gameplay-wise, so I don't know. I feel like that could have been more as well, because I mean, I don't know, like it... it it's like a mechanic that like is relevant when you would be farming the campaign 
But why would you be farming the campaign apart from like dungeons? You could like do totals and like randomly like encounter some, sure. I don't know. It's just like a like a mechanic that I personally like almost never interacted with really. Because I never like did the content. Like by the time I would was able to make them spawn, I didn't really like do the content where they would spawn, you know? So it was kinda yeah. You ain't learning mammoth route. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to like... Oh yeah, Mammoth side quests can be kind of a pain, to be honest. There's like so many, like... Like, especially like in Steel Cap District, there's like so many side quests, like going back and forth and forth and back. Like, even the most optimized route is like going... Like, even the most optimized route has like tons of backtracking in it, honestly. That one quest to save the dumb idiot by restarting the game. Uh, there's no quest we have to actually restart the game though. That usually, like, there is none like that. You don't ever have to restart the game. Nico? I mean, just kill him. Who cares? <laughs> There's even an achievement for that? Wait, what? Oh shit. I mean I, I mean I have it, but I didn't even know. That's funny. I don't have it. Of course I have it. I have all the achievements in this game. How many times have you done the quest with the trapped girl in croplands? <laughs> oh, that one? Okay, yeah, that one I... I actually did it, um, I think last week. Because I wanted to, like, show that it exists. But I think the last time I did it before that was, like, four years ago. Yeah, you're right. Like, that one I never do. That's true. Like, the one with Balog Nuff with the demon, right? Yeah, never. Never. It's it's so far like off the off the main path. And I don't think it even like gives you any like proper reputation. Like it's just useless. How many times have I fixed Mogrogo's shrine? I mean whenever I killed him. I would never praise to a god without killing him, wouldn't I? That makes no sense, right? Like, why would you pray to a god when you don't kill him? You actually get Robo Rap for the Demon Girl? Oh. Uh hmm. -huh. Interesting. Alright, we are an ass ass in now. With the ass ass and blade. Play this assassin build now. Ordered of the boar. Yeah, these flesh warped thingies are insane, aren't they? Yep, yep, yep. I wanna play all of them, holy fuck. Brawler's gloves. This would be like a good pair of gloves if it wasn't shit, right? If this wasn't shit, it would be good. But it's shit. So it's not good. One undead totem in Arcovia gives more rep to the rest. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably not wrong, yeah. Okay, do we play Purging of the Fox, or do we play Order of the Boar? I think I want to play Order of the Boar because it has like a higher base level, and thus it has like higher base uh, armor. Good, you're back. Vide Peppa Pig. 
Thanks for the resub, Ibium. Welcome back, welcome back. Much appreciated support. Welcome back to the bloomers. May the Ugdom blooms drop for you plenty today. Renegades of Pro. Okay, like we just equip like all the stuff, right? And, like, see what happens. Equip all the good gear, which is green and not blue, right? And then look at resistances. Okay, there's shit. Actually, are they that bad? I think it's mostly the helmet that's like bad. I mean, the helmet allows me to like properly use Warcry though. Which I could do now. Do I want to do it though? I could also play it this on top. Right, 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 right. Okay, if I wanna like play lazy, right? Let's equip this. Equip that. Talk to the sky. Talk to the sky. And then. These guys are still fucking friended because I didn't do the demon girl. Should I do the demon girl real quick? I wonder why there's no MI gloves and boots. Yeah, there technically are MI gloves and boots, like the purple Krieg stuff. Flesh uh, warped plate man is your favorite trans walk. Yeah, it looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Looks pretty sick. Dude, this roll is just so insane. Like, I'm still using the level act, like the act one amulet. Because it rolled like such insane stats, to be honest. Okay, let's just set all of that. And, um. Yeah, I'm gonna just like put the sanctified bone here. Put the boner here, put the scaled hide here. And then, ideally, I wanna like craft the runestone, but I think for runestone, I need to like have these guys on respected and I did all of their quests like what the fuck did they even want from me actually no I didn't do all the quests because I didn't go to SLT right I didn't go to Steps of Torment technically true right I did not go to Steps of Torment My oh shit 16% aether rust uh... holy fuck That's a terrible roll, but like, of blade suffix. Aye aye aye, that's total garbage. Unlucky, 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 unlucky. Okay, you know what? Maybe we should keep these. But I need more spirit then? Oh, okay. The shoulders I'm gonna change though. I think. Or maybe not. Because, like, these give me Cadence. I mean, uh... Not Cadence. Warcry, I mean. But then I would have, like, 6% Aether Rust. Yikes. Nah, we're gonna use them. And fix component, like, put me with, like, one or two points in Spirit. There we go for the ring. And let's go back. Can I make this work with gear and time? With different gloves and different shoulders, yeah. Let's take a look, shall we? Yeah, Cor Corba, Corba's a fine build, actually, now. I mean, it's still kind of squish, but it's okay, it's playable. I mean, it can have like actual ridiculous damage. It's not. It's not just okay. Okay, I can't try. Or, like, I want to try one thing here. Since I have like a ring, it gives me like bonuses to this. I want to play with this. Then I also want to play that because I have like the helmet for that, right? 
so that we can play this and that instead of all runs rage. Um, that's pretty good, I think, at this point. Um, Hammett still has like shit component though, because I still didn't get the rep. Okay, maybe I'll just like get the rep real quick. I, what I could do is like I could like go to Sepsis Torment and just like do the dungeon up to like the gate and not go inside the gate. I mean, you don't have to go inside of the gate, right? There's no quest inside actually. There's just like the quest outside this one right here. The old scars. Let's do this quest. We're gonna like, get some reputation with the Rover faction while going there because we're just like uh, killing some undead, right? Not crafting the Devil's Crossing Bell level 35. Oh, yeah, I should do that. You're right. You are very right about that. You are very right about that. <laughs> no balls to go inside. It's more like a waste of time than anything else, honestly. Why would I want to go inside? Like, for what? What is the purpose of going inside? Except for, like, proving you that I have balls. Can we zoom here? Zoom? Zoom! You would enjoy watching it? Would you really? Would you enjoy watching me like ruffle stomp some skeletons? Imperius of Supremacy. Holy fuck, that's a good medal, yeah. It's insane. Congrats, congrats. That is pretty good. Like, you're like the same level as me. It's funny. How did you get, uh... I did a 30 walk cleaver and I didn't. Three. Guess I'm unlucky. I mean, there's also like another shrine down here, like it's not really like a waste of time to go here. Okay, respected with the rovers, that's all we needed, right? That is good. Good, good, good. And then since we're here now, right, we might as well like complete the quest by like killing the... the priest as well, on the eastern wing of this... Uh, area. We started yesterday, okay. We found the zone right off the hill. Wait. Wait, which hill? Dude, this item right here used to be like a decent item for... Oh wait, no, it's a blade arc item. That's for the blade arc. Right, 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 right. Alright, uh, Zarthusadon is honestly pretty fucking scary boss because he has like a curse that can like reduce your physical resistance and he doesn't only deal fire damage but also like a shit ton of physical damage actually. So you might want to be a bit careful around this guy. I mean at this level it should be easy but if you like go here earlier right you can be kind of scary. Then they're done that. Let's go and report back to Reeve. But before we do that, we actually go to the rovers and now get the blueprint for the for the runestone. Then get the blueprint for the soldier belt in Devil's Crossing. Then uh, my game freezes. And then um, I'm gonna craft all the good stuff. This also allows me to craft Restless Remains, and Restless Remains um, are very nice for Force Wave 2. We need some muffins. <laughs> Let's take a look, shall we? Excuse me. Goodbye. See anything 
All right, sell, 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 sell. And now what? Now what? Um, we put... Yeah, okay. So we want to craft Restless Remains. This gives you casting speed and leech, which is like perfect for Force Wave. I'm gonna go here and get Rotten Heart, Focusing Prism, Gluttony, Silver Core Bolts, Aether Soul, Cancelling Talisman, Blitz for Talisman, and Devil Score. We just buy all of them here, actually. And now we can go and craft. I don't wanna craft this guy, right? This guy is garbage. Yeah, this guy is garbage. If you craft, like, actual gear, like, not components, but, like, actual, like, armor and belts and so on, you want to craft a smith that gives you a good crafting bonus, right? Because every smith has three different crafting bonuses, as you can see down here. And uh, you want to craft at a smith that has, like, a better one. Because you're going to get, like, one of those three stats at random. And Duncan is, uh... Duncan is kind of bad. Uh, also, you want to craft a runestone, right? That's like one that we just got. A runestone needed like three ward stones, so now I can't even make it. That sounds fun. We need like one more crystal. Which I guess we can like get around the... Could get like here real quick. There's like a very fun path to the east here that you can take. Don't be afraid of Aether Ground. I mean, you should be, but... Um, okay. That's a crystal. There we go. Got the crystal. I uh, might as well like, go back to Homestead and like, craft at a smith and Homestead from, like, the Fort, like, uh, from the Black Legion. What do you think is the strongest skill in Grimdawn? The strongest skill for what? For leveling? For endgame? For... This boss or that boss? Like the standard answer in Grimdawn is, it depends. Because this is not Diablo 3. It depends a lot on everything. This is, uh, this is not as easy as Diablo 3. Not as like one-dimensional. Uh, anyway, um, what else did I want to craft? I wanted to craft like a plus one to all skills to soldier belt, right? Which we just got here. Which is another ward stone, which means we need to crawl and get another three aether crystals. Fuck me. Oh well. <clears throat> the throw shit skill is OP? Yeah, the throw shit skill is like actually not the worst skill, yeah. It's not the sh I mean, it's, it is the shittiest skill, but there are worse skills. And the throw shit skill. The, mo the best skill in this game is the one that you have the most fun with. Like, unironically. Because... Uh, almost all the skills are... Well balanced and you can play like almost whatever you want. However, you need to build the skills right and some... Skills are better without gear, and others are worse without gear. You want an OP skill to start with. Okay, what playstyle would you like to play? Would you play to play... And you can play what I'm playing right now. This is uh, honestly one of the best skills for, like, if you're, like, new to the game. You play a Force Wave, like, you play Soldier, you play Force Wave. And you just, like, spam this. It's like a medium range wave ability. It's one of the best. I mean, Soldier is generally like a very melee focused class. This is like probably like the highest range skill that Soldier. I mean, this is the highest range skill that Soldier has. All the other attacks are like more melee, like close range. Um, all of which can be good later as well, but like for leveling, I would say Force Wave is like just the best. At least for the Soldier class, right? It is the best. Is it the best all around for all? Mm, probably not, but. It is, it is really, really solid and, like, one of the best, for sure, yeah. 
Why does Falso have such a weird hitbox sometimes? You stand next to the buff and you can't hit it. Alright, it sounds like a skill issue. I don't know. Like maybe, yeah, maybe you didn't like aim properly. <laughs> I mean, maybe you're not hitting it because you have like terrible offensive ability. That could also be the case. Like, if you don't have high enough offensive ability, offensive ability to have like a hundred percent chance to hit, then you could miss, right? I just missed Aether Crystal with three hits because I was attacking defense. Defense was blocking it. And yes, that was a skill issue. I agree. The fence, the defense. D the fence. <laughs> I can do the card this later, but I mean, I'll accept the quest. Mirror and notification are good containers for the best skills in the game, I think. When it comes to like utilitarian, utilitarian and defensive skills, yes, 100%. Notification and mirror are like the most broken skills in the game, to be honest. But I mean, those don't deal damage, so they're bad, right? <laughs> like, as some players like to say, like, notification and mirror are bad because they don't deal damage. Yeah. Mirror deals damage, though? I mean, uh, yeah, technically true, I guess. Benetti has strong endgame builds. Honestly, Panetti is just always shit. <laughs> it's shit while leveling, it's shit endgame. I don't know why they didn't buff it properly. I mean, okay, it's not like utter shit, but it's pretty shit. And... I think they buffed like some endgame set for Panetti. So maybe it's like a bit less shit now. But like all things considered, I think it's still a kind of shit. Okay, like the best, okay, the best Panetti set. The best Panetti set is Lujigan Druid. Because Lujigan Druid puts Panetti on a cooldown and makes it like a debuff ability instead. And then you like don't rely on Panetti for damage, you like play other skills for damage. I mean, yeah, like Panetti is not shit, but it's like worse than everything else. <laughs> like pretty much literally. I mean, if you're playing Lujigan, it is your debuff because the set gives it resistance reduction, right? Debuff equals slow? No. <laughs> no, slow isn't... I mean, s slow is a debuff, technically speaking, but like... S s slow is like... Like, compared to other debuffs, like, slow is a meme. I mean, maybe you're saying that because of, like, synergy memes, but... Oh, by the way, I'm like, I I used uh, Warcry, right? Like, I expected to Warcry. Why am I not using it? Hello? Hello? Am I playing this game even? It's what? Oh. Took you long enough. Took you long enough to even talk to me. Took you long enough. The cult, it appears that the good. Good? Good. Big TDM for Electrocute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, the, the, the cute damage is pretty nice. But then again, even like for the cute damage, like the, the fucking totems. Especially now that you like summon four of them at once, and it's even easier to like stack all the cute damage on the totems. It's like, I mean, I think it's still not even close, right? Like, totems just deal like way more damage. I don't even, I mean, yeah. He did buff the TDM on Luldrigan though. Instead of like buffing the base skill, right, he just like buffs the one set that I already like was good with the penalty. Hmm. Questionable. 
in my opinion, but okay. Questionable. Slightly questionable. I mean, it is a way to balance the game, of course. I mean, I mean, I mean generally, I think he's like doing a good job, but like sometimes it's like question mark. Check yourself once you actually test the actual build. Yeah, the only thing I tested so far was like my version and my old version that's like not even updated. Which is like one point supercharged. I had a version like even older that actually maxed it out. Um, but then I like spec'd it to like back into like one point because it didn't feel worth it really. I rather like invested more into defense or like more into like, I mean yeah, just like defense mostly. I mean, yeah, I guess, like, damage-wise, like, I don't know. I mean, he did buff it. I don't know by, like, how much exactly. But if it's, like, a substantial amount, then, yeah, I can see it being... I mean, it was already, like... Like, for damage, it was, like, definitely, like, worth maxing out. The thing is just, like, for hardcore, like, for mostly bossing, for example, as well. Like, for safe bossing, I just, like, removed the points from Supercharged. And, like, put them to, like, get 12 points mirror or, like, 10 points notification, you know? That kind of stuff. Uh, it's just, it's just like a, like a defense spec. Will I be skipping elite? Uh, most likely, yes. 44k cute. That's pretty cute, yeah. And that's just the tip. Dang. 44k cute and it's just the tip. Ah, uh, fuck, what am I doing? <laughs> loading screen in Joy earlier. It was not even the right loading screen, man. Not even the, lo the right loading screen. Yoshi Ross, welcome, welcome. Welcome. How you doing? Oh, this is the dead end, right? Dead end. Dead end spawn. Dead end seed, rather. Superior ruin. Dude, I just need to like get to level 40, please. Can I get to like level 40? Okay, these are like literally the same, aren't they not? This is actually more damage, because it's more percent physical damage. Just like a difference in like roles. Like usually abomination should be better. I mean what what other stats do I get here though? I get some more like physique in that way. Yeah, I think I would like still play this over this, even though like the the raw DPS is higher on this, but this is like the additional stats, right? Like away in physique. I mean, okay, like away in physique is like kinda low value still, and like it's not that important. Especially the physique is kinda whatever, so. Why well, the fuck does it have a random resistance on it? Because monster frequents are too weak otherwise. I mean, they're not. They're like OP as fuck, but... I, I, don't, I don't know, like, why monster frequent, like, weapons need resistances on them. That kind of makes no sense. And I think, like, sometimes that's, like, part of the reason why, like, monster frequent weapons are so OP. I think they could, like, remove all defensive stats on, like... Most the frequent weapons, to be honest. 15 flat aether. I mean, I'm not scaling that though, right? That's kind of. kind of trash. Straight to ultimate after act 4. After act 4 might be a bit early, not gonna lie. That might be a bit early. That might be slightly too early. Alright, just bonk him, right? Just bonk, 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 and he's, he's dead. 
Usually you have to like do mechanics here, like when he like curses you and like he spawns the mob, like then you have like double resistance reduction on you and you like can just die if you like don't play carefully. Or you just bonk him. I'm gonna try that, sounds fun. Wait, what? Oh shit, he's gonna thunder. Oh no. What? Dude, what was that sniper shot? Did you see that? That last ball? Like, holy. He like predicted where I was gonna wade into. <laughs> it was totally not me jumping into it. It was like totally him predicting where I was gonna jump. Logorian the sniper, dude. Uh, out of energy? Wait, what? How? Since when? This like never happened before. Are you kidding me? Okay, okay, okay. Gotta disengage here. I guess Warcrow like needs too much energy or something. I should stop crying. Uh, uh, energy? Perfect timing. Not using three Ectos. I mean, yeah, you can like always use Ectos like if you have energy issues. But if you like you use Ectos, you also don't have resistances, and then you die on hardcore. So, but yeah, you can if you can fit them, and you need more energy like badly, badly, badly. You can like play Ectos. Yeah. I can't find Live Leech anymore in my stats. I don't know, because you're, because you're blind? I got shave Cade. Wonka. You've had way more energy issues than 1.2 to be honest. They overall made like energy... Like the energy game a bit harder in 1.2, yeah. But I think it's totally fine. I think it's like, yes, I sometimes had like energy issues, but like fixing energy is still not hard. Like, it, yes, it is harder than before, but it's still easy in my opinion. So I think it's fair. It's totally fine. What subclass is the most optimal for a fire strike build? Uh, ranged or melee? Two hand or one hand or dual wield? Seems the mob started hitting harder than 1.2 to compare to 1.2 test branch. Compared to test branch? Oh, I mean, the, the obvious answer, Digadom would. Probably be Purifier, so like Inquisitor secondary. Um, but you can also do Occultus secondary. Which, for leveling, is fine for fire. And then for endgame, you would switch over to Chaos. Um, Purifier would be like fire all the way, or like elemental maybe. There's like a nice two handed crossbow for Purifier as well, actually, for elemental. To be honest, I think like dual wheel pistols are good slash decent, like once you have like the legendaries that you don't need. But before that I would probably actually like go with like the 200 elemental crossbow from the from the from the cannibals and gloom wall now. Like an act five around like Udon Borg, right? In the gloom world you have like tons of these cannibals and like they have like crossbows and like they can drop like one cross but like it has like a metal damage to fire strike and then you can use that one to like play something kind of, like either like just pure fire or like elemental fire strike it's not too bad dual wheel pistols are they are fun and i think it's a great play style in general but um the item support could be better compared to like other damage types or like other play styles at least. 
Uh, but I mean, there's gonna be like an expansion next year, so hopefully they're gonna like fix that a bit. Okay, all this is, I think, garbage, more or less. What is this? It is all trash. Okay, cool. This metal can be really nice, by the way. You get these from, like, the Rhydox. These, like, Chaos Rhydox that you can only, like, spawn from totems until you get to act six like over here then you can also like fight them normally but before that point you only find them in totems and they can like drop this metal which is honestly pretty good because like fighting form is i mean fighting spirit rather is this over here and like whenever this procs and you get more crit damage in total speed as well uh and it's like pretty good skill actually at least like later on like when you get like more points on this that's a pretty good skill early on your chance of activating is going to be terrible so Early on, it's not that great, to be honest. It's like way better later on than, uh... You're playing a Warlord with dual pistols? Oh yeah, uh... Like, a Warlord can be good with pistols. Actually pretty good. The problem is, like, getting the Sand Spitter pistols, right? And also, Warlord has kind of, like, the problem that it needs to, like, play guns in the Talisman. It's not, like, a big problem, but... doesn't like naturally do a wield like uh, inquisitors it's not like a big issue there just... you've returned so are great all right i have returned i am level 40 and i got a silver bolt this is insane for like pierce range builds pretty good item actually very good item obviously uh, i'm not gonna play it on this build but it is a good item and we can now equip like the of ruin or of the abomination Yeah, I think I'm gonna play the of ruin because of ruin also has like a ton of trauma damage, doesn't it? And higher flat. Sure. All right. We are a proper force flavor now. I might actually like stick with Menir's bulwark. Like, usually I would always go around rage right for like, damage and so on, but I feel like with the Gorlos rings, I mean I could get a second one as well. This is pretty darn good now. Even while leveling, like the regen is also like. Actually, unironically, like, not bad at all. Alright, we need more purple for Ulzard. What do I play for Ulzard for purples? I mean, probably, like... I mean, okay, like, later on I wanna get... Obviously three from the Blade, then, like, three from the Scythe, and two from Ulzard. But... I can't pick the scythe and Ozad yet, so like I need something else. I would need to like pick something like hammer, maybe. Actually, no, I can't pick the scythe already. Is scythe good at this point in the game, though? I mean, the regen can be good, I guess. It can probably be actually pretty good. How am I gonna fix greens? I'm gonna fix greens with behemoth, right? Behemoth would be need like one more red. So, like completing this would give me like access to Behemoth as well. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I could try going like for more region already. Like at this point, <clears throat> like for sustain, like going region instead of Ghoul. Throne. Throne is nice for resistance. So at this point, that's true as well. Honestly, yeah. Like, Throne is always great for leveling as well. Let's just play Throne. You're actually totally right. And, like, Throne is gonna give me, like, five purple. That's all I need for Ulzard. This is, like, the quickest way to Ulzard as well, right? Like, getting a fiver. Like, a five purple devotion. And Throne is just, like, the best at this point. Like, 100%. Because, like, it gives you resistances. Uh, yeah, so that's nice. It is a good item. You can, like, kill the cultist real quick, report back to this guy. And should I even do, like, should I bother with Hidden Path? Maybe get some good pants there, right? Some, like, Solal pants or Greek pants. 
it's probably worth it for that. I could skip like the third part of it maybe. Because like now if you like do it in ultimate you get like the skip points anyway. You would go like throw those out scythe behemoth. I'm gonna like respec a bunch at that point then anyway, but yeah. You're currently level 42 and the resistances are shit. Should I try and fix them somehow? I'm almost at homestone. I mean if they're shit then you should probably try to fix them. But I mean it also like kinda depends on like what resistances are shit. Like some of them are necessary to fix already now. In my opinion for you, some maybe not so much. Like for example, Chaos Resistance. Uh you don't need until you get to Blood Grove. But I mean Blood Grove is kinda like close to homestone. For level 42 at homestead, where in Elite? I mean if he's like a new player and like finished everything, like cleared every map, full cleared every map, then you can be level 42 at Homestone, yeah. I mean, just because I'm level 40 after like killing Logorian, which is like a full chapter later, uh, like one and a half chapters later, doesn't mean you can't get to like level 42 in Homestead either, yeah. The numbers in order, 13, 13, 30, 46, 53. Uh, wait, 46, 53, 35, 24, 15, 59. You actually have high stun rest. And then um, 37. Yeah, so you need to fix these three. Okay, an easy way... Okay, first of all, a question. You know about components, right? Like this stuff here? And you know, like, you can put this on gear? Uh, you need to ideally have a component on every single slot. And... The also the important thing is like you need to have the right components. Um, you can craft many components at the smith, and the smith on average has or, like will provide you with better components than like what you can find. And for some of which you need to buy blueprints, but many of which you can just craft right away without you having to find blueprints. So for example, this anti-venom salve right here, that's the using like 20% poisonous that I have in my belt. This one you can just kind of craft right away. It would be a resistance that you have 46 of, right? So it's not, not like the biggest priority for you right now. Um, what I would recommend you is to craft also ward stones, right? These ward stones you can also craft right away. And you can craft two of them, put one on your metal and one on your amulet. And each gives you 18% elemental resistance, right? So like just these two would like literally triple your elemental resistance is pretty much, right? Uh, so like... Components, especially like around like level 20 to 40, can be like really, 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 really strong. And I kind of like the secret to like fixing resistances. Honestly, this component is just fucking OP, but yeah. <laughs> So yeah, what I would advise like every new player to do is always craft a Antivenom Salve and put it in your belt. Always craft two ward stones, put one on your belt, uh, one in your amulet rather, and one in your metal. And then put uh, corpse dust or like soul shards, once you get soul shards and your rings. This is used to fix your vitality resistance. Also craft six watch. I know it's uh, very popular to craft six watch. I think six watch is trash. Like, unpopular opinion, like, I think it's... Okay, like, it's not trash, like, it's, it's a good component, like, don't get me wrong, like... Six watch in your shoulders, for example, is still better than, like... All other components, except for Scaled Hide. Which is why I think Scaled Hide is better. And Scaled Hide is better, in my opinion, because of armor. But, like... Armor absorption also kind of, like, requires you to, like, always make sure that you have, like armor that's like somewhat appropriate to your level which you should try but obviously like uh, new players are gonna struggle with that too and then yes i can like see some situations where like if you have garbage armor then like six watch is arguably better than scale toyed but like you don't need bleed dress and pierce dress 
I think Pierce Ross is also like rather not that great. Like, or like, I mean, obviously you will need it eventually, but like, it's not that important compared to like Elemental Rust or Poison Rust or even like Vitality Resistance or sometimes even like Aether or Chaos Rust. I mean, yeah, I would always craft like double scaled height personally, like put one in like pants and shoulders, but you can also put like scaled height in like pants and chest and then like put a six watch in shoulders. That also works. However, I would also say that usually like chest components, like for chest you have like better options, like where is it? The one for elemental resistances, like this one right here, like hello the ground if you find us is pretty nice for like elemental rust. Or this one, like, just for, like, offense and movement and so on. However, like, a new player is probably gonna rather want to, like, use resistances than this. And then, like, the later, like, a bit later on, like, craftable ones, like, Sanctified Bone, and, right? Like, Sanctified Bone, basically. But yeah, I mean, I agree. Like, it, it, I can totally, like, see, like, you playing, like, scaled height and pants and chest, and then playing, like, silk switch and shoulders. That is, I agree, like the one situation where I would say it's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six watch written shoulder is kind of like gold versus Creek Crown in Undercity. Yes and no. The thing is, like, against all of those enemies, like, armor is still better than Pierce Rus. Like, Pierce Rest is not bad, like, Pierce Rest is good against all of those, you're right, but armor is still better than all of those. And getting, like, armor absorption to 100% is, in my opinion, or, like, to 98% at least, is, in my opinion, like, still better than all of those enemies than, like, getting Pierce Rest. But, like, both are good. For sure. <laughs> what are these like fucking elitist takes so, like in chat? Like if Krieg uses your crossbow, you're playing the game wrong. Dude, like chill, like he's it's like his first playthrough or something. Like go on. <laughs> I mean you're technically not wrong, but come on. You didn't play the game wrong, but you did something wrong. <laughs> yeah, you you did misplay. That's true. You played the game wrong. Like I mean, you misplayed. I mean, yeah, misplay is technically not the same thing as like playing the game wrong. It, it does have a different tone to it. That's true. It is. It is slightly different. Okay, okay. What does this pants? These are pants that are actually really nice as well. I like them. My current pants have stun rest though, which I also like. Should I reset to like farm another gold ring? Maybe I should do that, right? You died to Krieg, okay? Yeah, I mean, we all died at some point, right? Didn't we? Like, we all died to Krieg at some point. Some people like even died to Krieg like after thousands of hours though. Just be bored with knowledge. <laughs> Just have like all the gifts like gifted to you by the gods, by the Orcobian gods, right? Uh, let's hand in. Yeah, let's just actually reset and like hand in these quests and like farm another ring from Goddess. Just gonna like use one ring, whatever it drops, I'm gonna use. Sweats in Bolvar, yeah, like imagine dying to Bolvar, right? <clears throat> Couldn't be me, dude. Yeah, Goddess is insane, this patch. Goddess Ring is... Like, it even got, like, buffed, like, one patch before this patch, and now on this patch it's, like, the regen patch, kinda, so it's, like, giga OP. I mean, okay, like, for actual endgame it's not, like, giga, giga OP, but... It is so fucking good. And you also can, like... I mean, all is at, like, 100% drop rate, right? It's so easy to get now compared to, like, before. Like, before, like, Goddess Ring used to be, like, really rare. Um, and weaker, and now it's stronger and more common. Like, I feel like making it so common, they could like nerf it a bit again. Honestly, like not even kidding. Like not necessarily like the skill points or like the region part, but like maybe like the pierce rest, for example. 
has like arguably like too much power. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like no for endgame, like it's Most of the time you like play a one-off. I mean sometimes you can like play a two-off. But it is it is more rare than you think it is. And many builds also like play zero because like they don't use the skills, like don't play regen, so. Goros not having affinity makes it kinda hard to get like a good roll. I mean yeah, it would be it would be even more busted if it actually had affinity on top. But also, not having affinity makes it like useful for like almost all builds as well. But like this one right here, I mean, okay, this one is so bad, I think I actually want to reset. This is fucking health of lightning damage. That is so bad. That is, that is giga garbage. Faded Odyssey, work on, work on. Allo, allo, Shadow Strike skip. Shadow Strike skip, maybe next year. Just re-roll it. Just re-roll it, yeah. I'm not playing the mod. Nope. Not playing the Path of Exile mod. Not playing the Harvest League mod. Hashtag fix season 5 for this patch. Yeah, I'll see like how much dev time me and Stan have to like do that before the end of the year slash before season six starts. We'll see, we'll see. Affinity? Okay, so um it's like bias or like Okay, so for example, if this like this is a physical item, right? Like the base of this item is physical based, right? So a physical monster frequent like this has usually also a physical bias or like a physical Affix affinity, you could say. So it is more likely to like, roll with physical affixes. You're more likely to get a superior prefix, for example, here than like um, like a, the same magic prefix of like another damage type. That's kind of what it means. And Goddess Ring is kind of like a neutral ring, so it has like no affinities for like damage types. I mean, it could have like an affinity towards like regen affixes, maybe, but it doesn't. So I don't think it does, at least. Hey, what? What is my character doing? Hello. Uh, where can I get the scoop on Sunder? Scoop on Sunder. Okay, that one is also like hot garbage, isn't it? Uh, I mean, if like false wave was electric, like attack speed based, it would be okay and good and usable, but like it's not, so it's like hot garbo. I can never like see myself like wasting too much time like trying to farm this like more time than I initially wanted to like invest here, but okay. If you want people to play season four, uh, season six, you kind of don't want to uh, update season five one point two. Yes and no. Yes and no. I feel like it could help building up hype to have people to like be able to play season 5. Now. Especially like now, now that like so many people are playing Grimdawn. Like it could help with like building up hype. But it could also make people be burned out. By the time season 6 hits, and it could also make people go like, Fuck season 6, it sucks, I'm gonna go back and play season 5 instead, right?
Like, there's like different perspectives. Make him wait, make him hungry, make him hangry. I mean, for us devs, it is definitely like the more efficient way to like just not update it and instead uh, just make season 6 on 1.2 instead. Because uh, it will be like dev time that we need to invest into like making season 6 work on this patch versus like just work on season 6 instead. Functioning of celerity. I mean, celerity is casting speed. That's good enough. Puncturing is like pure damage, which is kind of trash, but I mean, whatever. The problem now is, though, I'm gonna lose poison rust and elemental rust, but it's not really like a problem because, I mean, look at my elemental rust, right? Holy fuck, it's stacked. It is, it is stacked. Dude, all my rust is stacked right now. What the fuck? What's happening? Except my Aetheris, don't look at that. Don't look at Aetheris. Yeah, 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 I know it's true. Like 1.198 1. 1. Uh, exists, so like you can just play it there instead, that's true. It is officially supported after all. That's true. Like, yeah, if, if, if 1.198 1. Ah, didn't exist I've anymore, I would... Expecting you, probably definitely like updated but as it is it's probably like a waste of time that's true comrade chocobo thanks for the prime much appreciated support welcome and welcome on to the bloomers where do you find a set armor for the conjurer swarm build swarm build like pet build do you mean like the beast color build or what swarm build or the Vitality Caster build. Fox. Oh, the dark ones. That one. Uh, you need to unlock the path to the Lokar boss. Uh, basically what you can do is, you can watch one of my videos, you can watch the... You can watch this video, and then watch the chapter that says Lokar Intro and Access, chapter 3.1. Just watch that bit, like where I talk about like how to unlock it. And then you do that, you don't have to like do the boss itself yet, but like... You unlock that, and then, like, there is a dungeon before that boss. And in that dungeon, you have four monsters, like, four bosses. Like, four mini-bosses. And those four mini-bosses are the guys that can drop the set. And that's how you get it. Dreadnought footpads. Uh, yeah, I was gonna use these maybe if I like fix my stunners. It's the most fun if you only missed the last piece from the last guy. And also, uh, yeah, uh, there are four bosses and you have to farm all four because like each one can drop a different piece. You can't like just like farm one of them and like hope that like the one guy like drops all pieces. No, that's not how it works. Like every guy can only like drop one part of the piece, like one part of the set. Do you really need stun rest if you just don't get hit? Just evade? Yeah, 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 just evade, right? Just evade. Man, I don't know, like, this this item should be good, but, like, if you're playing false wave, it's just not as good as this one. That's kind of funny. It does, it does make sense. Not, not funny, it actually just makes sense. Anyway, uh, I think I'm done here. 
I need to like talk to brother man Bill and then I'm done here. What is episode? Is Rainbow Fitter in the base game now? No, I'm just using the updated one that you can get over here. Like just scroll down to the very bottom to the last post and I get the, the latest one. It's so easy to dodge Shadow Strike now with the dash. Yeah, it is. Like whenever like an enemy or like also when you fight, for example, like Iron Maiden, right? You can like Iron Maiden like actually like thunders with her with her blitz now. But you can also just like evade over her blitz and then the blitz doesn't hit you. And, uh, you also don't get thundered. It's kinda cool. I like it. Plague bearers, Ravnos of corrosion. Let's go. <laughs> Boiler is also super easy, fuck off. He's hard, okay, Copio. I mean, you can like dodge over the damage, you actually can, right? But then you're like, you're still like standing inside of him and you have like evade on cooldown. I mean, evade is iframe, so like, you can. What you can also do is actually nowadays, you can actually like evade into Grava's balls. Like, if you have the balls to do that, right? You can like evade into Grava's balls. And with your iframes, you basically suck up the balls while not getting hit and like not getting debuffed and not dying. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Huh. That's what I would say too. Dude. Dude, fucking Gold Strings, like 17 points and it's even more. Holy fuck. Short on stream, live now. Do it now. No Doctor Redeem still. It's getting kinda light, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll activate that like next stream, I think. And, like, look at some builds tomorrow. After like... Another episode of this water. We're gonna play on Veteran tomorrow, I think. Get some like 10% more XP at least, which probably is also again like a waste of time, but... Okay, maybe I should just like try normal into ultimate and like don't even do veteran at all. What do you think? Should I do veteran or like do just normal into ultimate? Should we try Norman to ultimate? Yeah, maybe. E easiest way to reroll Norman into ultimate. Fine. Look, my like, LA rest is already like ultimate ready, right? That's already like ultimate ready. You lose fifty percent to the top row. And the meta rest is already like ultimate ready. Well, this not so much. <laughs> not so much. Wait, there's another quest here, right? Holy fuck! Right, the marketer quest. Just to ultimate out the Krieg. Yeah, but I need pure stress against this crossbow, so. Otherwise, I'm dead. What the fuck? Camera, please. Blitz now doesn't need a target, huh? A 
Blitz is unchanged. I'm playing uh, Rush on top. Have I encountered a regenerator mob yet? Several actually, yeah. Like this is Blitz, right? Like this still needs a target. But this is Rush. And this is Evade. Percent physical damage, same as percent pierce damage if you have 100% armor piercing from Nadan? No. If you're playing Nadan, you only want percent pierce damage, you don't need percent physical damage. Like, the percent physical damage does nothing for you. Because, like, armor piercing conversion happens before percent damage calculation. Oh, there's, a, there's actually like another shrine down here as well. If you like click on the secret torch, secret passage, you get like another shrine here. <clears throat> the lost tomb of the damned. <clears throat> there is a place here. Place with ghouls and totems. Where's the best place to farm iron boots? <laughs> Yo, we got Juggernaut Relic? What the fuck? Just get it. Just get it. <laughs> Just get it. That relic is absolutely nuts, by the way. It is, it is like an epic relic right usually you would like get it when you go to like act six and you like farm it in steel cap district after like defeating theoden basically right over here but you can also get it like just about now already if you're lucky i guess this one is expensive this shrine though it's actually kind of a scam the juggernaut relic is pretty good pretty good uh, since a new patch, if you complete a quest in ultimate, you get the experience also from the quest now in the late right? Not the experience, no. You get the skill points and attribute point rewards if that quest had skill or attribute point rewards. Like, for example, if you're playing... Um, like, if you're doing Hidden Path in ultimate, and you didn't do Hidden Path in normal or late before, then you will get like the skill point and attribute point reward from the elite and normal as well on ultimate. But if you have already done them in normal and elite, then you would only get the one point from ultimate. And it's basically like a change so that you don't feel forced like you have to like still play through elite. Because like before, like if even if like Crate did uh, unlock like ultimate after like normal Ologorian. Um, you still would want to like do elite to like do hidden path, for example, right? like always, because otherwise you would never get like all the skill points in the game. Um, well, and because of that like problem existing, they had to complement um, the Logorian like unlocking ultimate with the change that I just mentioned, because otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. What makes Juggernaut Endgame worth for some builds? I mean, they nerfed it a bit. <laughs> I... <laughs> people, people, like, say it's, like, their favorite Endgame relic because when I first made, like, the Endgame version of this, like, Avenger Water... Which obviously doesn't use Force Wave, but, like, Avenger set on Savagery and was, like, a regen beast, right? 
when I first made that build, I actually used for actual endgame content, I used the Juggernaut Relic. Because it was, for an epic relic, still like ridiculously powerful. Um, so even though it was like basically like an epic tier relic, it was like as powerful as like a legendary tier relic. And like for a certain like regeneration uh, build, it was actually best of slot as well. And now they like buffed some of the like regeneration tier 3 relics and nerfed Juggernaut a bit. So like now Juggernaut is like still amazing, but not like best of slot for endgame anymore. But yeah, like still, still fucking crazy, to be honest. Uh, what do we have here? Mage Storm of Celerity. It's honestly not too bad. I would lose like some physical resistance though, but I mean, I think that's fine. We are getting more armor to compensate. It's not too bad. Also, does this give me like Aether Rest? No, it doesn't. Okay, how, what gives me like Aether Resistance? The shoulders would. Uh, my current ones do too, though. This one would. Uh... No thanks. I'm gonna play these, though. Pretty sure. Okay. I think I want to play uh, Restless Remains now. Didn't I like craft the Restless Remains earlier and I just never used it? I think I did craft one, didn't I? You just play Juggernaut all the way until 100, until you find around here. Lots of value. You want us like Serenity on a soldier is not like that good value. But I also do play Serenity sometimes on soldiers. It is okay. You don't soldiers. I mean Serenity is like it's like when in doubt Serenity out, right? You can like always play Serenity on every build. It's for damage like never the best option. For safety. Not always the best option either, to be honest, but that's pretty good. Okay, we can actually craft a Juggernaut. Well, we can't because we don't have Odoran's blood and we don't have three brains, right? But yeah, you want to craft this one eventually. I could craft Rampage. What does it do? Attack speed, chance on crit, giving you total speed. It's not too bad, actually. The total speed is pretty sick. I need the spirit. Oh, that's fixable though. Sure. The attack speed is useless, but like the total speed proc is still nice and like cunning and percent physical damage is okay too. And currently I don't need the movement speed nor the elemental rust. And I need this relic anyway to like craft juggernaut, so like might as well craft it now. So I need three brain, I have zero brain. This is a no brain build right now. No brainer. Anyway, um, devotions, so we're gonna put one more in throne, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I'll call it here. Thanks for watching, guys. We're gonna continue this character tomorrow through all of normal and then make it ultimate ready and then we'll jump into ultimate the stream after tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys on YouTube as well. Much appreciate every single one of you being here.